so you said you I was in motion already. Episode 31, take three. Are you sure about 31? No, it's it's absolutely episode 33. Last week was 32. I can't count. And that's that. So, yeah, so episode 31, part three, which is actually 33. The gang's all here. Um, so, yeah. I did them, will be notated. Okay. Uh, put the start time into minutes. I don't know. Fucking procedural shit. Um, Becky Massey and Eddie Mann is coming up Monday. I'm excited about that. Um, Together? We, no, separately. And then I had uh, Ron, Ron McPherson had to move back a week. Um, who so who? Ron McPherson, he's the finance guy from the school board. I, I thought he's the back guy that did South Park. No, nope. I don't get that. But yeah, anyway, so. Is in McPherson South Park? Real quick, before we go a while. into the stuff that we actually want to talk about, well, what? can we point out really quickly? We all love the guy that's doing the interviews, the dude that you know talks while the music's going. We think he, we really think he's wonderful. Truly, do we? No, we we do. Hold on, I'm gonna no. cut him down. Does, does I'm he down here. Does he need a tickle? Uh, no, he tickles us. Oh, okay. <laughs> I also want to point out that that there are times in in his existence that he's cheap. He's very cheap, which is um, fine. It's, it's not. It's not any of. You know, it's his money, not ours. But over his left shoulder, he's got pointed out to everybody that sits in here. <laughs> it's not over my left shoulder, but yeah. I'm it is over your left shoulder. It's absolutely over your left shoulder. It's right there. You are a lord. All right, Max, if you were to point over my left shoulder, where would you point? Oh, your left shoulder is over there. Right, like like somewhere over here would be my left that's shoulder. Ex- that's exactly where it's at. <laughs> I see it's a, right there. I see a Biden Harris. I think you're. Mask. I think you're deflecting. Is what you're doing. I'm just. The point of this is not that anybody you, could see the reference anyway, but okay. All right, how, about, the, how about just to his left? It's over next to Macklemore. Everybody knows where Macklemore's at because everybody deflecting. loves Macklemore. You're deflecting. Nobody likes Macklemore. Likes I don't Macklemore. even know who Macklemore yeah. is, and you're deflecting still. Jesus. Oh, to your left, if that's better for you. To your Here. left, you have Did he die? the the dollar twenty five frame that you said you got from the Dollar Tree or wherever it was you got. I think it was. This is the six dollars, but so so the gentleman that does the interviews. Are you okay with me to say this? I mean, uh, I use my name on here. Yes. Okay. So, so you could say you could you can use my full title if you'd like right now. That's the exit That's hard, of huh? disappointment. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> so you can purchase land somewhere, I guess, what, at Great Britain, I guess? Scotland. Somewhere in Scotland or whatever. So there's you can buy land, mm-hmm. which is really nothing more than a tree. Mm-hmm. And if you own land over there in Scotland, you are a lord if you own land. It's a, it's a brilliant br- business move for... <laughs> Conservation? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Conservancy, is it conservation? Yeah. yeah, it's a conservation group. That's who does it. Is that a real thing, or you just no? That's a real thing. Okay. I'm sorry, you can't cut that tree. You need to talk to to Lord <laughs> Lord, Lord Barber. <laughs> so so here's the question. So what happens if the tree dies? You still own the land. So do, like, can you tell them that you want a new tree there? I'm Reparations. Not, I would to, he would have to pay for it. We didn't really he, go through all he, of this. He would actually. have to pay for the tree to be put in because it's his land. That, that's true. <laughs> he's gonna get a, Is there he's he's property get a, tax on that? He's gonna build. Good question. I'm, I'm serious. Is I mean. There, I mean do you lose your lordship? I do. That's a good. You, that your is tree a, fell on somebody else's land. That cost you money. That is a valid. Those are both. Those are all valid questions. I don't know. For those of you that are confused or are even still somehow listening to this, so uh, Seth purchased land in Scotland for the sole purpose of getting this uh, declaration on a piece of paper that says that he's a lord, Lord Seth A. Barber. And how much did you pay for this land? I mean, w- frame and all, I think it was seventy eight dollars. <laughs> so th- the land, the tree. The frame and the piece of paper, $78. Correct. <laughs> We're in the wrong business. We need to buy land. Like, why am I in healthcare? Why am <clears> I doing that? I, w- I should just plant trees and then sell, sell it to some asshole in Australia. Yeah, and they can say they're uh, a Tennessee hillbilly. That might be attractive to somebody. Uh, I, actually. Think be, yeah. I, I think it's a great plan. Like, sure, right. man. We, we, we got some more trees anyway, here the, that you can <laughs> claim on. <laughs> Come on over here, mate. So the, the brilliant thing, though, is... He has it here for everybody who sits in here that he interviews. Correct. Which I think is hysterical. It's not just in his room or like on the refrigerator. It's here for everybody who is accidentally being interviewed mm. by us to see. And my intent is, I don't know if I can do it or not, but uh, next year I have to renew, renew my driver's license. Mm-hmm. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can add the title. So my driver's license will say Lord Barber. 
That's, that's funny. I, 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 you just, know, you know what's funny. It's plan. Plan. What's gonna? What's <laughs> more hysterical. funny is the people when he interviews that park in front of his house and have to walk past thirty signs in his yard. Yeah, it's starting to look like San Francisco out there. I, I mean, whatever. Good. It's a, it's your land, Lord Barber. You That's do what right. you want to with it, but I'm just. It, does, it looks like San Francisco. Mine doesn't expire till 2025. You could buy yourself a tree and be, uh, you know, Lord Steve. Oh. It used to. They used to expire every fifth birthday. I heard. I gotta look. Lord Sam. Um. No, it expires in 24. That's weird. Anyway, unimportant. You got a long time. I just think it's great. It's just sitting there. You know, for any man to sit oh, down, it's gonna be it's gonna be a reference point at some point. Yeah, somebody somebody's gonna look over there and be Wait, like, "What are, the hell is are, that? Are they coming? Are they zooming? Brad, uh, much? Uh, they're both coming, in as far as I know. I mean, that was uh, the plan is right now is they'll be here. Um, this is gonna be a subject change for him. No, I was, if, if be, not, the you funny get, one you is hang it behind nobody's your nobody's head. No, nobody's noticed that one yet. Yeah, I saw that. Was it there last week? Yeah, it's been there for like or two weeks. Six, ago, it's been there for like six, eight weeks. So now. every other Saturday I'll be here now. So this yeah. five-two split schedule thing I've got. Every other Saturday I'll be present. Okay, Just which means every other Saturday Max will be here in person, and then the opposite Saturdays he'll call it. I just can't do gummies before podcast. <laughs> oh, he can. <laughs> no, I, you know he fell he fell asleep in the podcast again. <laughs> We, we wondered about that. I was pretty sure that I made it to the no, end. No, you didn't. I mean, so we're pretty what, sure what do you mean by gummies is we're just we saying that we're borderline type 2 diabetic and there's just too much sugar yeah, in, exactly. in your diet and we're just, we just need to be careful with it. I mean, yeah, you can infer whatever gummy you want, but the point is you we, fell asleep because there's, there's at least we were twice. We the phone died and we're like, oh. Yeah, there's at least twice. We're like, hey, Max, you still with us? And, and I said, yeah. No. A couple times. You asked me. Not all of the yeah, time, so he has multiple times. It's diabetic coma. It's okay. It's fine. That's a figured a while ago. Like I, I, I can't do that before we come in here. <laughs> no, I do want to sleep when that happens. What I the can't heck? do that. He's full on. Uh, sorry, Har- Harbaugh's getting mask crazy. Now, did you see uh, Nick Saban's mask today? Uh. Uh-uh. It's the same one that Dooley, not Dooley. Shit, that's not. It might as well be Dooley. We're winning as many games as Dooley. Um, Pruitt. So but we got fine. I think we got fine, didn't mm-hmm. we? I thought so. Sorry. It was mesh. It's like mesh. Yeah. Like you mm-hmm. can see through it. Mm-hmm. How's that preventing coronavirus? I don't know if it's mesh or if it's like if it's I a material I saw a f- that's full mask on. It, it, you no, can definitely you can see, see his lips you can for see sure. His nose and his yeah, mouth for moving. sure. Oh, so, and uh, Pruitt actually. Pruitt. Mm-hmm. I thought it was. I think it, I still think it's funny that a lot of coaches still like use their board to cover their mouth when they're talking. <laughs> they're just used to it. I don't know. I still mm-hmm. think it's funny looking. Though. Yeah. But I also think that to a certain extent, I'm sure we're going to get onto better topics than this. But I I do think that I'm going to side with Max on on this one to a certain extent. I think it's a little ridiculous that we. I wonder how much of this is soft power. Uh, we're trying to convince people that we need to continue to wear masks, which is why you need to be inundated with it on television. You know what I mean? No, like I I, I, like I, the I, logic of of this group of sixty college kids and the yes. <clears throat> and the crew of twenty people that work with them all day, every day for weeks and weeks on Correct. end. <clears throat> that having. 10% of those people required to wear masks in the one si- this one situation, which is correct. unlikely that it's like that all the time in all the practices and all correct. the other stuff they do. Yeah, and, I, and again, for, for the record, I'm in healthcare. Masks need to be worn, et cetera, et cetera. In this particular format, I don't know if it's doing more good uh, like from a healthcare perspective or if it's a you're, you're seeing this on television and you're in like South Alabama – and you see your coach is wearing it, and so I need to wear it when I go to the gas station because my coach is wearing it. I think that is actually the reason why we're doing it, not for healthcare reasons. Yeah, right. well, so it helps well, to normalize it. Yeah. That's what I'm sure. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Well, Walmart has opened up both sides of the openings now. Like, have they? You could only go on one side for a long time. Now it's both open. So, mm-hmm. but I've not worn a mask in Walmart the whole entire time. But um, I was we were checking out today, and I go out, and this lady's like, I, like, like I was at Sam's Club. I need to see your receipt. And I'm not wearing a mask, and she is. And I walked right up close to her, and I said, "Is this good for Corona?" And she grabbed my receipt, she scanned it, and I walked out the door. That shit pisses me off. I will say this much, and I, I don't want to make this the you know major topic that we talk about, but it, it, it's probably a person that's making nine dollars an hour. Who knows what sort of comorbid stuff that she's got going on? She may not have anything. She may be as healthy as an ox. But if she does have things going on, and she's working in that environment, and if people are not wearing masks around her. I mean, if she does get sick, it's more likely that she would die if she does have comorbid stuff going on. I know you don't care. I no, understand no, no, that. No, I do care. And that makes me happy. 
Okay. Uh, but if it was your mom, though, you wouldn't be happy. No. Well, my mom already went through it. <clears throat> uh, but that's not my point. My point is, if your mom hadn't went through it, I mean... And she would, died. She didn't die. No, and she died, I'd be not happy. Sure. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. If my mom died, I wouldn't be happy. Right. That's what I'm saying. So that's the only You're correct. that would change your mind. No, I still wouldn't wear a mask. Okay. Anyway, moving on. What topics we got today? I don't know. I mean, I sent that, uh, I got in a Facebook argument. But <clears throat> Facebook yeah. argument? Yeah. With whom? What, what, what? Random, randos, like Facebook does. I mean, it's just, I mean, I said, I sent the link that doesn't have the actual like post part from the individual, but, um, I sent the link to the group and it's that one that's like, put your address in and we'll tell you who voted or who, who, who donated for, I can't remember the, the verbiage. That is fucked up. Yeah. That's weird. It is a fucked up. Like it, fuck, to fuck, me, it, it's, it's fucked up. I mean, it's public record. Donations have to be public record. That's part of finance rules. I get that and stuff like that. And you could have you could have put that out in different ways, and it wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have even. It wouldn't have even like pricked my ears up to 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 start an argument, basically. But to to have a site where you can look at anybody's name and see where they live, how much they donated, like. Well, I mean, you can. You can go to the the Federal Election Commission and do the same thing. It's not going to give you the map. It's not going to quite kick it out as user friendly as this this link does. But I mean, <clears throat> you know, it's um, American uh, like the title on the web page when you click on it. Americans that donated to a vulgar lying draft dodger and tax cheat, two hundred twenty thousand dead. <clears throat> and then you put your address in, and they tell you which one of your neighbors have contributed and how much they've contributed. Again, the contributions and the addresses are public record because it has to be. But I mean, if you were to put that in, if you were to put that in terms of like. You know, see who your neighbors are donating to, right. and or like if it's to me, it's intent like the the intent of it is very divisive in the way it's set up. It's set up to say for for me who hates Trump to be able to go on there and be like, oh that fucking dickhead down the street, All right? And so I got uh, into a, a lengthy argument about it, and and that was my thing. It's like, what is the intent of what we're doing here? Like, what what's the point of this? You know, uh, is it? And then like some guys like you know. Do our um, listeners have proper context? Do what? Tell we're talking about. I mean, you want me to read the website? I mean, just I mean, the background of what we're talking about. If anybody's actually listening to this entire thing, which they probably if, aren't, but if you donate to Trump, I get it. I'm just making sure that the listeners do. I can go on this site mm-hmm. and find out where you live. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. uh, Donald okay. Donald Trump dot watch. Not that I want to promote this website, but if you've done, I'm assuming that's if you've done it directly to. Donald Trump's website, right? And I think it's I think it's bullshit. It's like where they're getting their information from, and what right. it, it says on right. the it website. Says, it says info from the it's FEC, public record. FEC.org. And really, it's technically, it's a, everything is public record. Everything that's available in that is public record. But how right. about when you when you file your taxes and it says, "Do you want to donate two dollars to the president election campaign?" That would technically, I believe that that. Shows so up. I would show up because you know that that's. I don't know. I have a problem with that. I, I, I think, it, and I think there's a problem with it too because there's people in the in the chat part of this thing. As I was going through arguing with people that are saying like, one of their neighbors donated twenty five thousand dollars. They can't unless they have multiple multiple adults living in the same household. Right. Contribution max as an individual is like twenty eight hundred per election. So if it was, I mean, technically Trump did primary, so you could donate to that one this time, and then his presidential campaign this time, and then if it does, if it's counting it as all time, you could have technically donated max four times, which is only ten thousand. Eleven thousand, twelve two, or twelve two, whatever the math is. <coughs> Thirteen two, sorry. Right. So you'd have to have the only way you could get into that twenty five thousand dollar range is that if you had both, like you had a married couple that both individuals max donate on all four possible elections that could have been donated to, which is possible, but and it's eleven two. By the way. Okay. Whatever. But the the point being. Unless you have a th- a third adult living in the household, you couldn't get to twenty five thousand dollars at an address legally. Your point of that was? I think. Well, I think that some of the stuff it's kicking out is bullshit because that doesn't make sense. I mean, how is that? I mean, it's not impossible, but it's highly unlikely that you're going to have an, a single household donate past at least what a couple's max would be for all four possible. I think the large, cycles of contribution. I, I think the larger issue that we have here is that this is again an example of divisive rhetoric that doesn't help. 
Right. But but again, you know, both sides are going to argue that the other side started it. But until we get to a point where we're actually able to have discourse and disagree and be okay with disagreeing and not call each other an asshole, uh, you know, this well, stuff is going to get worse. No, I agree with you. Well, why, why is that? Whether, you know, we've had the conversation of who's pulling more yard signs and doing all that stuff either, either way, no matter which way it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, how are you so pissed off at your neighbor to oh. go and pull yard signs out of his yard? You know, yeah. like, yeah, that's part of the science. I'm curious if I might lose. I'm, I, I'd be curious if I lose one or two. I don't. The reason why I keep track. Do, the reason why I think you, you know won't. How many do you have to begin with? Yeah. The reason why I think you won't is because if anybody's paying any attention whatsoever, aside from the fact that it looks like the East Wing of San Francisco, I don't think anybody would take anything because it's anybody that would spend two seconds to think would think, hmm. This is ridiculous, and maybe this is what he's trying to get across, is this is ridiculous. I would hope so. That's kind of the point. Yeah. So, and for anybody that doesn't know, there's quite literally a sign for every single candidate that is running in pretty much every single office. Well, in, in that'll be on my ballot, yeah. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, so, I, got, I had some of the ones, some of the other ones that aren't on my ballot brought to me, and I was like, no, just take those back, take them to somebody who is actually able to vote. Ballot. Right. Yeah. So, will you have all the independents and all that stuff? No. You just have the major. Yeah. Well, so, so then the question would be, your Libertarian Party candidate, do, do they have signs? They do. I mean, because if, if they're not out, they're not out there yet, you really should reach out to them and say, listen, well, we, we the do problem is, a the, Joe Jorgensen out there? Uh, no, I don't have a Joe Jorgensen out there. The problem with that is is that I would have to purchase it or donate to get it, and then that puts donation record on me if I ever run or run for office. Do you have to – do you think that you would have to do it considering that, you know, we have a media tag now? Probably. Really? Yeah. I mean, did you pay for the Trump one? No. So how did that happen? Because I know, excuse me, sorry. That's not urine. It well, might, it might be. It might be. But he's pouring it's something into a glass. Pain. That may or may not be urine. Um, <laughs> and now I'm going to drink out of it. Um, but um, I, I, I don't, I could try, but it's the, 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 I got all those because either if I've spoken to those candidates individually on the show. Not Trump. Or... We had the party chairs in here who had access to give them to me. Gotcha. And do, you, do you want do you want me to steal a Joe Jorgensen sign for you? <laughs> no. Procure no, is the word you're looking for. Um, I mean, I've seen a few around town, but not many. But um, I really think that you should just email the the party and be like, "Listen, why don't I mean, you, I, I email, who we are? I, I mean, I, I think you get it, send it to you. I really I, do. I emailed a, a, a an interview request. But why don't you have your wife just like have the kids some, paint one? There's some IPAs in the cooler that are cold instead of a hot ultra. Hey, you drinking hot ultras? He was gonna. Um, Damn. I mean, work sucks. You gotta gotta drink. No, not that one. No, you can have that one, or that one, or any of them. Yeah, there's uh, there's a that that, that uh, sweet water in there's from Randy. He left that with us, and he had to have his his nephew had to explain what the flavor was. That was pretty funny. <laughs> and his nephew <laughs> explained what the flavor. Yeah, was. the sweet the sweet water four twenty grain uh, strain rather. But I don't know. It's funny. I mean, so like the big one. I mean, the 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 only one that I actually have a strong opinion on, on all the signs I have out there is the the one that's facing the other direction, the Amendment One one. And I'm trying to get. There's a group here in town that's advocating to vote no to Amendment One. I'm trying to get somebody to come on here to talk about talk about that. But well, well why don't you talk about that? I mean, I I, I can, but I mean, it's basically it's it's the law director conversation. We've had it before. The... But I'm trying to get somebody who's passionate enough about it to be part of a group that's pushing the agenda to vote no on it to come voice why they're so passionate about it. That I the mean, law director just, should be an elected position. Well, the, the, the important thing for you out there that are, haven't voted yet is that essentially what you're voting on is yes or no to a change. So voting yes is, means you're voting to change what is current. And what is current is we vote for the law director. So if you vote no, you're voting to leave it the way it is. If you vote yes, you're voting to change it to not electing it. And that there's been there's been conversation in like there was a Compass article about it and some other stuff in in that the uh, um, I, I guess it's the charter committee that that wrote this to put it on the ballot or whatever like wrote it in a way that's kind of funky. So you're like, should you uh, should the law director be an elected position? And you say yes, but actually you're actually saying no. You're actually saying no. Right. So again, like like the, for the, the the clearest way I can think of to explain it is you're voting, your yes or no is to a change, 
And so currently it's a voted position. So you're voting yes or no to change it from what it currently is. So no. So yes, it should be a, a voted position. No. Yes. <laughs> if, uh, a vote yes means it should change to an unelected, to an appointed office. A vote no is to leave it the way it is as an elected office. So it is currently an elected office. Yes. Okay. Why would we not have it be an elected office position? I mean, I, I actually went and found, um, I actually emailed Mayor Jacobs' office. Yeah, so I was thinking it was reversed, that it was always in and custom at being at a Mo, like office. we're one of we're, like Knox County is one of very very few places that elects their law director. Most most municipalities it's an ele- it's a it's okay. a it's Maybe an appointment from, that. and that's one of the arguments for changing it is that we're weird that we do it this way. And it's like that's not a very good argument, but okay. <laughs> most uh, everybody else does it. Yeah, you know, and so but so yeah, so um, I reached out to this group and asked them to bring to have somebody come on and we could talk about it more and so in inviting them I was trying to get the other side and Mayor Jacobs has been vocal about wanting to change it and so I asked him or I asked his office to for a statement from him and they gave me some bullshit he doesn't have a stance on it answer um, but he wants to change it but he doesn't have a stance right but, which but is fucking stupid right but send me a link to um it's like archive.org like every time like if you ever watch if you ever see any of the videos of any of the county commission meetings and stuff like that they all get archived and go on the mm-hmm. site mm-hmm. and so she sent me a link to the charter commission meeting on this and actually like really nice and it was it was, it was perfect because it was like here's the link mayor jacob starts at about seventeen thirty, and so i went and uploaded it and then scrolled to about minute 17 and then you know listen to his his argument for um making an appointed position and you know so i mean it's for making it an appointed versus right. an elected right so what it, like, so ba- the base the base argument on that side of it from what i understand from what jacobs was saying is that it's you know it's supposed to be um you, you don't want a person in there that is that is interpreting the charter essentially the county charter in a way to get reelected you want somebody to interpret it as a lawyer and so an appointed lawyer would be in Jacob's opinion, less likely to be political with his interpretations than, or he's going to do interpret exactly. it for the guy that's appointed appointing him. him. Right. Right. Yeah. Again, not a very strong so argument. That's why but... Jacob wants an appointed position. Cause then he can control the law director. Also, I find it interesting that, uh, since he is right leaning and generally speaking, right leaning folks are anti establishment, anti-elitist I mean, he's sort a, of folks. He's a, he, federally, he's a libertarian. He's been in the National Libertarian Party for uh, a long time. I said time. right-leaning. I didn't say Republican. I'm just Libertarian is, a, is is more right-leaning than it is left-leaning. Okay. Uh, what, I'm, what I was going to say was it, it, it's, it's interesting to me, though, that <clears throat> if you're anti-elitist, that it seems very elitist that you would want to have that as an appointed position and not an elected position. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I, I, mean, I you know, it, it seems very elitist to say that we should appoint them, not you elect them. Right, I mean, I, like I, I mean, do, <clears throat> I think the the president should assign all people around the country, all of them. That's sarcasm them. for you that are out there. Assign them to everything. Like who you what? work for, how no, many kids no, just, you have, just, just the elected a, people. Assign like, a successor. You just vote for who you think for president. You have one thing, and then he can just assign everybody. That's also sarcasm. I mean, it'd be easy. I mean, that's, I mean, dictator. It wouldn't be easy. Di- like, di- who, who should be the county commissioner di- of <laughs> District Twelve? It would be easy for us. It Knoxville. I also find it interesting that he's also he's against that uh, the person, the health board person, being an appointed position. And it needs to be an elected position. Why is this any different? No, his argument on that is that to, for to have the ability to make rules and regulations, not laws. Um. Should come from elected officials, not an appointed position. What's the, what's the difference? And one thing I was reading is if they did like the null and void, like the the board of health power, as far as they they want to take away the the power of the board of health, but if they did that, it's still, as far as I I believe what I read was in the bylaws that it still reverts back to the head of like the Knox County Health Department, which, which is, is the, the same, same person, person right. that that runs the board of health. I also want to point out here, just taking a step back. I want to point out that as much of of the bullshit that you see on television, federally, local shit matters more than the federal stuff does. I mean, that's the point. That's why we're right. Uh, sure, I just want to. Re- I want to. You know, sort of restate all of this is that 
you know, we have all of this stuff that's going on at our local level that is infinitely more important than anything that Trump says on television or that Biden says on television. Like that, that's important, but it's nowhere near as important right. as some of this. Local and going stuff back is. to where we started on the on this uh, Trump watch bullshit thing about how much people are donating to, to the Trump campaign or whatever. I bet you those same people are dated, are donating shit. Compare like as to local to compared to local elections, uh, probably it's not it's not unlikely, but well, I mean it's just like you see. Well, other than the the signs that are put out by, you know, like Duncan Massey that's putting these signs out all over the place, but like in people's subdivisions in yards, you see more Trump Biden Trump Biden. Uh, not in my not in this neighborhood. No, oh, Trump Biden. Sorry, I thought you were Trump. Trump. Anyway, sorry. No, I'm saying yeah. you see more president signs in people's more yards. More federal. You're yeah. saying the, the federal stuff. Then you yeah, see sure. you see more of the other signs because they put them in places yeah. that they can put those. And, and on the on the same note too, what I find super interesting, and I pitched it, and you know, none of us did the research, but like I don't know shit about any of our federal candidates from the state of Tennessee that are running right now, like. As far as like the massive amount of shit that I'm that I personally am getting and I'm making fun of how much I'm getting from the Manus Couch campaign, I got six more this week. That's like fifteen in the last two weeks that I've gotten on that that one campaign. I've like got in your mailbox. Yeah, I've gotten zero things from Haggerty yeah. or Bradshaw. I've got zero things from Elaine Davis and Renee Hoyas. Well, I, mean, I take that back. I got one from Renee Hoyas. Um, Is uh, that that magazine? I don't you think have I've over got there? any. Yeah. <laughs> I've not gotten anything from any any campaign other than I got a call from some ladies like, and I'm "Hey, like, will you support us?" And I said, "No." Well, is the qu- I have gotten text from Brad <laughs> I don't know Shaw who campaign. she was. Well, so the, getting text. The, yeah. the question is, being, I got a text. Yeah, that's what it was. Is, is it less about whether or not you're receiving it, or more about they're not getting any donations, so they can't even afford to send it to you? I, you know what I mean. I, I mean, I doubt. I doubt that on the on at least on the Bradshaw Haggerty campaign. I doubt that it's a money issue. It's it's Why? a money issue. It's a or like in a cost benefit analysis. We're going to spend the money. That, on, m- I mean, that's what I mean. That version, yeah. Well, because I mean, I don't know if I. Fuck. Um, we don't have the money to respond to if you do respond back to us. But right. It's like, so I don't, if it's not advantageous for them to send it out, then they're not going to bother with it at all. You know, if, if, if right, the, if and the they point, have that data. Right, they have the data. They can sure, see what's going sure. on. If they're up by twenty five points, why do we need to send you anything? Right. You know, like we're not going to send anything to to California. If you're a Republican, you're not going to you're not going to send much out. Like if you're the Trump campaign, you're not going to send much to California. You're going to lose California. Period. Right. Like it's, it's right. And, and, you don't and, spend money there. Right. Sam sent that article a couple weeks ago about uh, like a billion dollars in thirteen states. Yeah. In one week or something like that. Yeah. That, that the two the two presidential campaigns. So what? Spent. So what? Well, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, Ohio, Florida, <coughs> Texas, yeah, all, um, all swing states. maybe Georgia now, uh, potentially South Carolina because Lindsey Graham's actually in trouble. I mean, you you know, like you don't need to spend any money in places that are absolutely red or absolutely blue. You don't spend any money there. Exactly. There's no reason to. Right. You're wasting it. Right. So yeah, same concept is really right. what I'm talking about. Like say. flyover states, because it's literally the candidates fly over those states to sure. then go. Sure. Yeah. Well, what, the, these text things um, crack me up because, like, I got a text. I don't have to look back. Who I don't know who it was, but all it said was, "Can we count on your support, Bradshaw, for such and such person?" I bet you. Yeah. And I was like, um, "No." And it was like, okay, thank you. Like, and I was like, give me, if you're going to text me, text me some content in that. Like, right. Hey, we want your support. This is such and such. And they believe in this, 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 and this, and this. you know, give, I mean, if I'm going to read it and respond to it. Well, like I had one from Brad, the Bradshaw campaign that I got, uh, earlier this week. And it's like, Hey, I'm this person from the, the Bradshaw campaign. Um, can I count on your vote November 3rd? I was like, I don't know. And it says, it's great to research candidates. You can find out more at their website. It's like, okay. some bullshit on that did, did they send you a link to, the, to their website? Yeah. So at least advertise that. Like, hey, to find out more about this candidate. Right. But then after the link on this one, they say, well, what's on your mind this election si- cycle? And I said, the size and influence of the federal government. What is uh, Bradshaw's opinion of the size and scope of government? And then she actually answered. I was surprised. But um, Marquita is running on the three E's, environment, economy, and education. Do you have one that's particularly important to you? Not sure how to answer the question. Here's her main issues. I'm happy to try to answer questions about specific policies. Do those three E's require more government involvement and expense to succeed? And then she goes on to, Marquita supports increasing the minimum wage to $15 an hour. 
like, okay, so you're not going to answer my questions. So did you tell her I run a business and I don't agree with that? Well, in this one, it goes on uh, $15 an hour investing in small business owners and addressing unfair tax structures more at Bradshaw's platform, whatever. Um, but, but, but that statement right there, we want to raise minimum wage to $15 an hour and invest in small business. Don't seem to correlate. Those two things do not go right. Well. And I'm not in business with you guys, but like it, as soon as that was said, I was just like, "Well, that's not really going to help you guys at all." Now it would help. It would oh, help. It, it would help us actually. I'm actually. It, 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 it would help you if you, if your employees are making fifteen dollars an hour. It, in, in 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 a selfish business standpoint, yes. Okay. It's because fine. we're at a point where we could afford that. It's. I think it's more than the job's worth. But we're at a point where we can afford that. But another company coming in trying to start up against us is going to have a real fucking hard time paying that. So it's going to damage competition to us in a, in raising minimum wage. I was reading an article. Of Bezos, Bezos is apparently one of the big kids that's out there trying to push the federal minimum wage up to fifteen for that particular reason. For that particular reason, because mm, makes sense. Amazon can afford it. Walmart can afford it. But anybody else trying to even take a a, a, a Tenth of a tenth of a percent off of Bezos. Yeah. It's a good you, you, you want you want a cashier in your place to ring up, you know, uh, fucking two dollar beers and stuff at at Weigel's. Yeah, you you don't want to pay those people fifteen dollars an hour. Right. That's an interesting argument, though. I hadn't really thought about but that it's, before. It's, that it makes sense that, that the big companies <laughs> would go back and support it for the PR aspect of it. Right. But really, if you dive into it, it has nothing to do with the PR aspect of it it's and a, paying their employees more. It's a competition thing. Right. That's an interesting it's, argument. It is harder. It, it it'll be. It, it is harder yeah. for a startup to come it, to get against you. Um, it's it's harder for. Interesting. It's even harder for an existing business that just doesn't have the weight that you do. Because they they go from maybe a five or ten percent margin to now having to lose most of that margin to employees, and hmm. then they have to make that decision to either lay people off to keep their margins good, or go to a very 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 tiny margin to stay hmm. to stay relevant. Yeah. And um, then over the span of time, without that margin to to invest in in growth or whatever else you want to do as a business owner, you can't survive long term yeah. without I mean, without some space i know it's been like seven and a quarter for years like i don't know what it was before that or how it affected businesses before it actually went up to seven and a quarter well it, I, I don't the prior to at least in our state yeah seven or and not, a quarter yeah, it's federal yeah or 750 it's 750 Seven, seven, seven and a quarter. Seven quarter. Fire that was like five twenty five. Like when I, I remember started, it being five twenty five. My first job, minimum wage four seventy five. And then I remember it down to three something. And I think my first job was like a dollar eighty five. Hmm. What? 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 Yeah, that is such an. I Working in really hadn't park. considered that. <laughs> that is such yeah. an interesting point of that that I hadn't really th- I, like I haven't thought of yeah I mean so what's the next step then but like, yeah like, it's been, I mean, it's been raised over time like how did it affect business I mean I haven't heard this like you know brought to the forefront until now like now well when, one of the big things I'm raising they're like we're all gonna go under like we can't we, we can't do this well, one of the big things too is is a, a jump from five and a quarter to seven and a quarter right is 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 significant but not huge we're right. i mean we're talking about doubling the minimum wage yeah, right now. i mean even if it went to ten dollars like like it, right. if, if and i'm assuming it's, it's a negotiating like chip basically maybe because like if, if it jumped to ten dollars an hour that's not a, that's not a big deal um no we it's don't still, we don't want to start anybody less than ten dollars an hour anyway but um <clears throat> but like when you're talking about doubling but even that but even if if when we were first getting going we weren't paying ten dollars an hour we couldn't afford it so I guess my question would be though. So so let's just forget all the the nonsense sort of you know knee jerk uh, you know elbow in the chin sort of thing. Let let let's say that you're Bernie Sanders and you're Bernie you're Bernie Sanders and you you are elected president and you have the you have both houses of the Senate and you are able to push through a federally uh, mandated fifteen dollars an hour sort of deal. What's your next step when you realize that you're sort of. Uh, Creating a bottleneck monopoly here. Well, like, it, what do you do next? I guess <clears throat> is my next que- is my question. Well, what, do you, what do you do after that? To, not to avoid answering your question because I will, but the 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 other it's thing more that no, complicated than that. The, but the other part that nobody talks about is is that if you're the federal government, that's that's a that's a it's a it's a it's a it's a raise for yourself. You're you're by raising minimum wage, you're going to raise income tax revenue for the <clears throat> for the government sure. On, sure. on the side. Sure. And so that's that. Like nobody talks about that part because it's you know. We don't. We we're okay with paying taxes, I guess. But so let's get to but, that. But we'll next get step, to that in a second, yeah. right? But I mean, as as what as, as Bernie Sanders, what's next up? 
or anybody that's promoting that. But let's or, just say it's Bernie Sanders because he's the only person right. really right now in, in sort of a national level that's pushing that as hard as they are. I mean, Biden's, Biden's not pushing that, at least that strongly. Let's put it like that. I mean, I don't... I, 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 you know what I mean? Like, Because I, I would assume that uh, the people that are trying to promote this $15 an hour thing is actually maybe erroneously, but they're, they're, they're trying to do this with good intentions. And when they realize that this, all they're doing is just making Amazon, you know, be, being greater than they are now and they don't have a whole lot of competition now anybody they have even, have even less in the future what are the what, what's their next thing because in well, reality all they're trying to do is they're trying to make the living wage a little bit better but it's actually making it less because you're going to have less people in the workforce well, well, i mean hey, that's that that's I one mean, of the assumptions to talk about too is that I've, is that i've heard seattle's done it fine because you've talked to a bunch of small businesses in seattle and i mean i i, I, I mean what what's I've fine seen reports coming out of seattle what, what, what as far as like businesses, it has, well, okay. as far as like it hasn't affected small businesses inside of Seattle. As far as being able to function, they haven't had was a massive. Se- as okay, far well, as but, like everybody's gonna fucking have to close down because they well, can't they can't afford to pay anybody. Another question, but another question in there that we don't. Then maybe the maybe what you're talking about alludes to. But what were they? What was normal before, regardless of what actual minimum wage was? Because you could you could have a a, a city, for example, that. Self regulates into like a fourteen, twelve, thirteen dollar minimum wage. Right. That's and not. I would. I would. Say not on the books. Definitely agree. That's probably part of it. That like you know a lot of those smaller businesses were probably paying between like ten and thirteen or whatever an hour. Right. But so as far I mean, as when be- they went up to fifteen dollars an hour, like it wasn't like this massive. Everybody was going bankrupt and like we can't fucking do this and everything fucking shut down. Like, well, that's a different argument than what, what Seth was there. trying to say. Seth was trying to say that that let, let's say your rate of new businesses is say fifteen percent a year. If your rate of new businesses go from fifteen percent to seven as a result of this, then you're actually hurting small businesses, just not the ones that were already existing. You're ex- you're hurting the ones that right, would hurting, exist. You're hurting new business. Right. That's the that's market. what I'm saying. Is that so? Seattle, as a, in this example, and I, again, I'm the furthest away from you know, strict libertarian here at this group. But I just think in this particular scenario, if, if, if there's a decrease in new businesses, then you're still hurting new businesses. You're not hurting new businesses that already existed. If that makes sense. Yeah, I get it. I don't know. I, I'm not saying that that's happening. I'm just saying if that, if those are the number, I would want to see the numbers, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, who knows what the hell they look like? Well, well I mean, I mean, in, in, I, I mean, would say it, like here, said, it, it, not too many cities have actually tried that. Sure. Well, I would you know, say like here in Knoxville, Seattle, and I think, Portland, maybe, but I want to say, like, I know Seattle, I think, did have, like, a citywide increase to the $15 hour mandate. mandate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where yeah I, I don't next? think there was any, like, crazy fallout as far as, like, the city was fucking shutting down because nobody could fucking do it. Right, but right. the but the, the next five McDonald's that got built were right outside the city limits or something like that. I don't know. I'm just saying. There's, I was, there I was are ways starting, around it is what right. you're saying, uh, and I'm saying that I, I would want to know. what If the data shows the same amount of new business startups as a percentage as it was prior to this whole thing, then I'd be like, well, maybe they're on to something. But uh, so I want to know that. And then the second thing again would be uh, wh- what's the, if it does hurt growth of, or uh, origination of new businesses, what is the step? What is the next step for the folks that are advocating for a higher minimum wage? Right. And I mean, it, it, like the term living wage is one that I have a problem with too. Just the, the, like, well, one the there's semantics behind it, or there is a little bit of semantics behind it. But but what one you have like here in Tennessee, mm-hmm. a living wage is different than California because the cost of sure. living and the cost of living is different in those two places. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, where like it seems on the, what the issue of living wage and being able to make enough money to live, we only focus on one side of the conversation. Like we're only focused on how much money people make. Nobody's talking about why things are so expensive i agree we should do that i mean we should you have know, that that's, a, that's too, another side of sure. it too to be but like, what, I was, what i was gonna say is in, in Knoxville, i mean there's very very few people working for 725 an hour you know even fast food restaurants are around that nine ten dollar range so there's not there's already at least over 18 a minimum wage of nine or ten dollars an hour that's kind of that i think that's already in place to it because you know if if i mean like for us right now where we're hiring people it's it's i mean shit do we need to give everybody raises and then start higher higher to try to attract more people like it's i mean that's a i mean 
the 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 hardships of trying to hire right now is a is a completely there's a completely different in my opinion at least there's a completely different problem with why it's harder to hire right yeah, now everybody's but, everybody uh, is trying to hire right now I, I would say most fast food is probably no more than like eight fifty nine an hour i mean we I when i was know, a cookout, chick-fil-a he's got to sign out eleven fifty an hour starting range up to yeah I mean, is, it, is it? It's a up to. I mean, what they, it says? They, 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 yeah, they literally put on their sign up to. Oh, I a certain know. amount. Yeah, I don't know what the also, amount was. Also, the fact was, that they they would only pay eleven fifty. When was the last time we went to Chick Fil A? They sell more fucking chicken <laughs> than anybody sells. Any, they can they right. could well afford eleven fifty for everybody. Not, yeah. not on Sundays. <laughs> or yeah, sure. Right, they've been in the same token. A lot of people assume that. <laughs> It's high schoolers that are working, you know, these fast food jobs. But most of the year, high schoolers are literally in school. Who is <coughs> manning these fast food restaurants during most of those days, during those school hours? Senior citizens. It's, it's everybody else in the world. <laughs> or just everybody else in the world. Well, I mean, it goes back to a question I've asked. I've asked some of the, pol- some of the different politicians that come in here. It's like, well, what are the jobs? Like, I mean, because the problem is, is that theoretically at least a fast food job is not supposed to be a career it's just supposed to be some work right i mean that's one of the arguments in why right. minimum wage is fine where it's that's what i'm it's, saying it's not that, supposed that's to be the a argument career. is there, there's a lot of people that work these jobs literally monday through friday through most of the day right and but why can't i mean you know the the, the point being is what other job could or should be out there for a for an adult adult to have as a as a career job not I mean, other than going into management, where do you go with McDonald's? An adult adult. Okay. I mean, yeah, an an, an adult adult. I think it's an interesting... So what you're sort of putting your toe in the water on is it's an interesting statement because because there is a section of the country that, or the workforce, that either don't have the skills, and I'm not taking up for people. This is just a fact. There are people that that are would not be qualified to do much of anything outside of handing me my happy meal back. Now, do I think they're supposed to, they should make 50,000 a year? No. But I mean what do you do with those folks? I guess is really my question. I, I'm I, I'm not I'm not saying that we should pay them enough money to, to have a four-wheel drive Cadillac. That's not what I'm saying. But you know, they should be able to eat. And, yeah. and I think that goes back really what I'm doing, I guess, is sort of going to what you were inferring five minutes ago, which is we're only having the conversation about how much money they're making, not Jesus Christ, the cost of everything has went up exponentially more than what the weight of rages are. And so we really need to balance that sort of format, too. Right, I, mean, I, I don't know how I, you do that without having government of involvement, but... Right, because, I mean, there's a, there, there, to me, there is a... There is a a huge gap between there, 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 there's a huge, at least maybe not full gap, but there's, there's a, there's a huge hole somewhere in the lower middle area where it's, you've got to get into um, like higher education profession, um, military experience or something like that to get you work on the other side of it that gets you between that minimum wage, whatever, what's minimum wage annual. Well, uh, I know you're $15 the, an hour is 31,000 a year. Okay, so yeah, it's multi- You just so multiply the web that. that number is up by two typically. So, so if you're making ten dollars an hour, it's twenty thousand, roughly. Okay, so but like there, so if 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 ten dollars an hour is twenty thousand dollars a year, where is the gap of where where is the work between the the twenty and fifty? Right. Like, what are those jobs that are livable wage jobs? Quote living Which is wage what, jobs. What most people are doing. What. I mean, we talked about it before, like the whole like the, the mean average ways versus like the median average ways. I don't. What are I don't. What do you mean? Most people are doing. I don't understand what you're saying right now. Oh, as far as just like average, average yearly salary. Like, is it like ten dollars an hour? Right. That's that's. Yeah, I believe you said it was like for ten dollars an hour was like twenty one dollars or twenty one hundred. Twenty one thousand. Yeah. Give or take. Right. right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I where be, I believe that's below the poverty line. Okay, but where, where so that's above the federal minimum st- standard for pay, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's two dollars and seventy-five cents an hour more than what the government sets as a standard wage. Okay. I'm at, what I'm asking is where? Why is there? Why aren't? Where? What are the jobs that are between twenty and fifty thousand dollars a year? 
Right. That, that's, and I, that's, that's, I mean, there are, there are a fair amount of them that isn't. That I is mean, ma- they're not just that fast food. That is the majority jobs. of jobs. I don't know about. I mean, there's a fair amount of jobs. Any jobs that I mean, we talked about your sister in social work. I mean, like she was making less than fifty. Oh, my sister only was exactly. making like twenty. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean am, so am I crazy? With a bachelor's degree. Is position. that not a majority? With a bachelor's degree. Yeah, Valedictorian sure. from the University of Tampa. Yeah. Exactly. Is right. that not a majority of jobs? Am I wrong? And I, I don't know. This? I I I don't I don't know if I want to go down the rabbit hole of whether or not it's a majority. It's a fair amount, at least. It's probably the majority. So I, so the question. I'm not is, arguing against you. I'm just saying that it needs. I, so, I'm with you in the spirit that it needs to be fixed. So thirty-one five is fifteen dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. Thirty-one five. So my sister that graduated, you know, valedictorian, University mm-hmm. of Tampa, four-year degree, mm-hmm. has never made thirty-one thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. in any kind of social work. So, who did she work for? Like, just, what was what was it's the, an underpaid profession? Um, she worked for Most the definitely. Knox County Police Department, right? Okay, as a, a parole person, she worked at that. She worked at a methadone clinic as a counselor. She worked with kids, like a kid's home, like, you know, mm-hmm. troubled youth or whatever, and they had a home. I but these are state, I mean, the, my question is, these are state-funded employers. It's not a private employer. No, the, the well, the methadone was, was private, but the other two were state okay. um, places. So, like, you know, she's not even making $31,000 a year mm-hmm. with a four-year degree, mm-hmm. and now we say that fast food workers, I mean, that's kind of the, the whole joke, you know, fast food workers. Um, should make thirty one thousand dollars a year more than a person. So, so what, what's the point of going to college? Well, I think the point though is, is I, I think that that the fast food worker straw man argument, the fast food argue, the fast food worker argument is a straw man argument only to push back on the fact that we have a, a wage disparity. And I think that the reason why the fast food argument is used is because it allows us to push back and say that people shouldn't make more money. Because I think that there are situations where you don't work fast food, like your sister, and they're working harder than the fast food worker, but they're still getting paid the same amount of money. But we don't utilize that as the argument because the people that want to potentially change that utilize the fast food argument and not your sister's argument. Does that yeah, make sense? I mean, yeah. and, 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 it's, it's, it's intentional. There's, there's a trickle up effect, I guess, in that aspect. Right. That's that's what I'm implying is that it's easier to, to, to disregard that as an argument because we just say, Jesus Christ, they're just giving me French fries versus Jesus Christ, they might be saving somebody's life. Right. Or or you're dealing with like, you know, what she did she dealt with. She there was a couple times where she had to go to a home because the the people's baby died or whatever mm-hmm. in this drug fucking environment and she's gotta deal with a dead baby and mm-hmm. talk to the parents and you know, sure. she she kinda deals with that and it's like you're she was making twenty six thousand dollars a year and so then you're like, Okay, so then if we raise minimum wage to that is the state now going to pay those people thirty five thousand dollars a year i mean or are, or are they just gonna they, they, they should be collecting more taxes so they could i won't say would i mean are they going to they should or have is more it money just to be like oh we're going to give you a raise to thirty one five and it's like well if i have to deal with dead babies i'm just going to go work at mcdonald's in the drive-thru right but I, I and i think though that the people in i'm not trying to be conspiracy theory here but i think the people in power that would potentially want to the people in power that could potentially change that want the argument to be focused on the fast food worker and not your sister because it means nothing changes. Because we we see the, Jesus, you're giving me a Big Mac. Right. Versus, Jesus, you're actually saving a family. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's easier to have the argument if it's a fast food worker, even though it doesn't matter if it's a fast food worker. It matters that this is the amount you're making, no matter what you're giving me, whether it's French fries or my family back. It's still the amount of money that you're making. What What is the um, average income out of college? Anyone know? I have no idea. We yeah. could probably we could probably Al Gore it real quick. Why don't, why don't you Al Gore it where I'm uh, going to check something out yeah, real I mean, quick. That's a, I'd say that's probably a statistic that's... Skewed Again, in, it, it, it's, it's skewed in both directions, depending on how you want to look at right, it. Right, uh, sure, that's true. I mean, I mean, if you're working for a hedge fund and you're making, you know, seven figures versus a, a person that's, you know, working thirty, uh, making thirty thousand as a as a social worker. Right. So I don't know about average would would help you, but you know, uh, sure. Like I said, I mean that that may be like a a huge part of it is like they don't want to increase the uh, increase the wage of the lower income. Because then they're up to the income of what we would call middle income. And all the middle income, um, people, middle income people are saying, hey, 
these quote unquote low income people that are working fast food restaurants are making the same money that I was just making. Right. I need a raise. And I now. went and took a hundred thousand dollar debt out at right. school to get this job so I didn't have to make minimum wage. Right. It's a triple <clears throat> like I said, it's a, came up with the idea, a triple up effect, not trickle down. And yeah, and then that would force whomever to pay more to keep, to keep them there instead right. of going in what so Max is saying, go to like, there's there's an incentive to keeping to people at a lower wage just because it doesn't. Well, I mean, there's there's up. always all of a sudden you've got like, well, that person's making more than I was, and they're just you know flipping burgers. There's and, always the libertarian side of says, well, tax less of my money and I can spend more on myself instead of the government taking I mean, so, chunks uh, of it. I I I don't want to go down the damn libertarian thing again, but it's such a fucking bullshit argument that. You've got to. You have to rely on your neighbors to have the same vision you do with money. And like, if they don't, then you don't get anything that would potentially benefit you at all. And so, like, I, so I, I get what you're saying. Like, you, you're. you're a, it pains me to say this. You're an intelligent, rational human being that can take care of their, you know, the people around them. And I hope that this thing is being recorded, so I guess you can hit play anytime you want to. But, I mean, your next door neighbor and that or the. 15,000 people that are next door neighbors to you may not do that. And and I think that is without going down the FEMA bullshit that we sort of circle jerk around all the time. That, for me, that's why libertarianism fails is because it assumes that everybody has the same sort of, you know, pro community vibe that you do as a, as a person and who you are. And that, that's just not the case sometimes. But, but I think that's the case in any situation because you do your job in the health field so does everybody do the same job you do in the health field uh in my particular icu yeah no well no i'm talking about everyone with the same degree you have what same degree that i have I'm talking about the one you use, not the, the, all the degrees you <laughs> right. have. So, so g- give me the question again, and, I, and I'll, I'll answer it for you. So does everybody with your same degree mm-hmm. work as hard as you do? Work as hard as I do. The answer is no. I, yeah, I don't well, know why, I don't I don't know why, know why you're, you're asking me. I don't know why you're struggling. It's a if rhetorical you know the answer, what, it's a rhetorical question. Okay. Yes, because right, you could have just said, oh, I expect you to go, no, nobody works as hard as I do. Well, um, no, I don't know that. I mean, I, listen, I, I, this year yes, I've been focused. You were, we, we, we had this conversation. You're like, you guys screen other nurses that are on different places to come work in your area because you know they're not going to work as hard as you. Well, well, us, not me. Us, your group of well, people. So, yeah. Okay, I'll give you that then. You said us, not me. Like well, I don't want I don't feel comfortable walking to me like nobody works harder than me, motherfucker. Well like, there's there, there's there's that. people in the hospital with the same degree you have mm-hmm. that don't work as hard as you. That is true. Yes. And so that's the point I'm getting. So it doesn't matter what it is. So you you, you think that, you know, everybody that's going to I mean, it's it's like you know, when I was managing restaurants, you know, I was assistant manager. I want to be a general manager. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is going to be cake. Once I become a general manager, then all my assistant managers can fucking run the restaurant. I can chill and have fun. Mm-hmm. Then I realized when I became a general manager that my, the assistant managers had no desire to do what I wanted to do. Right. So I guess we're saying the same thing then maybe yes. to a certain extent. No, I was agreeing with you. Okay, that's cool. What I was, I was, okay, cool. Uh, that, that's my issue with, you know, the government shouldn't tell you what to do with your money. Uh, to a certain extent, I understand what you're saying, but that's assuming that we're all on the same page about where that money should go and if we're not then like we're fucked i need to move and that's that's unfortunate what if you like where you live or what if what if you don't want to sell your home or what if you know any number of different variables come in there like you have to rely on the people that are around you to be rational enough for you to even explain your point and then you have to convince them to go along with what you want to do with their money and like so i i guess Yes, it makes sense for you to be a libertarian, I guess, in theory or pseudo in practice, but but that only works for you and not for people that would say, fuck it, I'm taking my money and I'm not spending money in, on schools. Like, I don't give a fuck if my kids ever learn anything. Or if ever. you don't have kids, you're like, my kids are fucking grown. That's true. I don't give a shit about schools. I'm like, I'm infertile. Like, I, I'm married to a man. We're not ever going to have kids. Like, I'm, fuck yeah. it, I'm, I'm, my money's well, not going to public school. That, that was a big thing in San Antonio. When I lived in San Antonio... My property tax, I paid fifty six hundred dollars a year. That's property a fucking taxes lot of money on a hundred and forty thousand dollar house, <laughs> and like four thousand wow. of that was for schools. 
Mm. 4,000 of that money went for schools and there was a big uproar for people that were, you know, grown senior citizens and stuff like, I don't have fucking kids in school. Right. Why, why do I have to keep on paying for schools? But that, that was just, right. I mean, there's a good argument why, whether you have kids or not, that schools are important, but sure. But again, I mean, you have, to, yeah, you, I mean, you have to assume they don't that get you're, funding when they were in school. You have to assume that your neighbor's rational enough to understand that as an argument. And like, if they're not rational enough, to, which is a point that I was going to bring up at some point today was, I don't want to transition to this just, just yet, but like, it's important that we have more people that vote. But at the same time, if we're allowing folks, we're allowing, if, we're, if, 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 right, if we're encouraging, if we're encouraging, thank you. If we're encouraging folks to come in and vote and they're not rational individuals and they're just like going back to the infamous sort of Facebook post where you read this stuff and you think it's gospel, do we want them to vote anyway? So it's a, it's kind of a double edged sword. Like, if you, if they're not rational enough to he- understand what you're trying to say, do you want them involved? And can you even convince them that what what their money is supposed to be going for is beneficial to them at some point in the future? That may like we may not be able to convince them of that. Or people that like are going back to my epigenic inheritance. <laughs> they don't know better. That's a whole topic, we, topic, we, we, he, we, topic okay. he wants to do here at some point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it, I mean, to me, it goes back to the we've had this conversation a thousand times. Is a, a government body that does good work is a real question, and it's like the the the, the realist of me, despite my libertarian, is like I acknowledge the need for a tax structure for government to provide certain services. Mm-hmm. What but services? we're at a point of bloat that is out of control, both local and federally. Like, you know, we have, you know, mayor's aides stealing golf carts and shit like that. <laughs> you know, that we have, I mean, we have, a, we have, uh, we have a garage full of golf carts that the county owns that nobody misses when one borrows one or something like that. Why do, why does Knox County own, I don't know how many total they own, but why does Knox County own a, a, a garage full of golf carts? And that's tax money spent. That What's your point? My my point is that that the actual services, the the quote needed services, that I agree that the general public may not may not be capable of being convinced to do it on their own, is a requirement of government, and I'm 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 okay with that. But the 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 level of the the level of money and expenditure that all the government bodies that we sit under is beyond its usefulness. I, I don't like the words that you're using. Okay. I, so the spirit of what you're saying, I don't disagree with. I think anybody who's paying into taxes should have a say so of where the money's going. But uh, but I think using using phrases like it's beyond their usefulness or I want limited government. I think I think those are just catchphrases. I th- I think that, that the spirit of what you're saying of like we should have a, a more of a say so in where the money is going. I'm with you on that 100. percent But I but I I don't. I don't know of anybody that wouldn't agree with you on that, even even if they're far left folks that are tree hugging liberals that you know walk around in daylilies all day long in San Francisco. But like, I think limited government gives this sort of false idea that uh, you know we don't we don't want government at all, and it's just you know we should all we have the ability to live off the grid, and I'll do what I want to, and nobody can tell me what I want. You know, like that that that's not reality that can't work well see yeah because i mean w- what you're saying is uh, you know if, if we lived in an environment like oh you know kind of like how um uh if everything was like um rural metro fire department in the county where you know if you need them and they burn down your house they're going to send you a bill or if you pay a yearly fee then they'll cover you how many people are going to do that how many people are going to be sure. i mean people are going to be like oh well, shit I, well, I really want a police department. But rural, I should, I should, I should give to the police department. But I really want to. What are the chances my house would actually burn down? I could save that money. Right. Yeah. Like I um, mean, that, that's their reward of us with insurance sure. in general. <clears throat> I want to put put a pool in. So next year, next year I'm going to give to the police department. Sure. Or um, sure. we're not having kids right now, but we just had a baby. Right. So um, maybe 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 we it. should start giving in a couple of years to right. the school system. Right. And so how mu- how often is that going to happen? Right. Where that these programs are not going to be able to survive because right. of that I, situation. I, I think what you're actually saying is we should all have an active role in our local government. 
I think that's actually what you're saying. I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong, and if I'm I mean, wrong, let's have that sure, argument. That's, that's bad. That, 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 that is certainly part of it. Um, Rural Metro is a, a bad example because it's... It, it, it is it is a non competent a non competitive private industry, so they can get away with shit like sending me a fifteen hundred dollar bill and saying tough shit you got to pay it. You know that's a the you know if there were if there's but, but, if there's but, more than one if there's more than one private industry doing the work his hypothetical there's, there's a conversation in that but I, I no his and, and, hypothetical was there would be more I, I don't think his hypothetical was strictly speaking the way it is right now I think he's I, I think in your hypothetical would be. If you want to d- donate to, if you want to give a certain amount of your money to schools, go ahead. And if you don't, then we don't have a tax format that allows that to occur. I think it's what he was saying. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, I know that this, but this is why, like, I'm super, I'm super bummed that I'm that Ron McPherson pushed back a week because I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out the school system money situation. Okay. <clears throat> because I could be, I could be wholly off base on trying to focus on this one on how much money we spend on Knox County schools. I could be wholly off base on how much they collect and spend and budget for in the school system mm-hmm. versus the value it it it, uh, uh, it puts out. I could it, be wrong. It's really difficult to provide the value <clears throat> that it puts out in like an actual, you know, I mean, if you're looking for a, for an actual val- like a capital V value for the amount that it puts out, I mean, I don't know how the hell you're going to ever get that. You know, like what what and what and what how do you quantify that? Right. I know I get what you're saying, but I'm trying to understand that I mean, because my, my example, I've got the some of the paperwork in the drawer here is that my kids at school mm-hmm. average $5,400 a kid. Okay. The state through the tax structure, the state alone puts $7,300 a kid into Knox County. So 2000 roughly more than what is right, required? Right, than, than, than is spent on my kids. Okay. On average. Okay. Um, And so, and then the county also puts a percentage in as well to get it there because I, I can't remember how much the state has done because last year's if i don't remember how they do their budgets as far as if it's school year or fiscal year but last year's budget was 60 or 660 million fuck i remember that do you even know what you're talking 600, about 600 <laughs> sorry <laughs> it was it was 600 million and <clears throat> went on the sheet of all it has a list of all the schools and the average spent per grade school you get a big total at the bottom and it's like 374 million okay of a 600 million dollar budget okay that's 200 25 million give or take okay um where'd it go what is it uh, i don't know I'm, i don't work for them i don't no, know either and that's we that's what i'm that's yeah, what i'm trying to that's that that's, that's the rabbit hole i'm going down and that's, that's why i'm excited need to, to talk to the comp troller just say it again and 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 in, in case i haven't heard you the last 15 times comp he said comp troller and what does a comp troller do pretty sure it's the person that that is <laughs> pretty sure at, <laughs> Essentially, the the oversight that does the calculating of fiscal expenditures. So, versus the accountant, who is the head accountant for the school board, of who I'm specifically yes. trying so to would then go up to yes. So, the, so the so there's the guy a, who there's a comptroller, yeah, that is essentially the head of the either the, the county, city, state, or whatever. Have we looked up who this person is? is no, I haven't. Is the person we that, that looks could. over this? Yes. I mean, okay. I mean, I will. We can. Uh, after, I'm not saying this person just, exists or not. I'm just saying that if this person <laughs> does exist, we can look them up. It's all. I'll, I'll, I'll make a. I'll make a full point to ask Ron when he is here who that person is, but I. I see. I, I see no. Yes, the controller is the one that does financing. I, I see no lack of of knowledge. I, I don't see it, that I'm not going to get the knowledge I'm seeking from the guy who actually handles the fucking checkbook for the school board. Versus the comptroller. I don't think the comptroller is going to give me anything more than Ron. Ron's going to give me. Ron, I'm sorry. Ron's position is. He is the he he the assistant to the comptroller. He is, he is the CFO for Knox County Schools. He's the f- chief financial officer for Knox County Schools. Is that, com- that's the comptroller. <laughs> it might be. I don't know. He might be the backup comptroller. It might be. I'm assuming it might be a titles the, game. I'm assuming the comptroller is above him. <laughs> Okay, uh, and you might. I've you, never you, heard you, this position before. You may be totally right. You've no, never, it's a real thing. I, 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 I'm not saying it's. A, it's a made-up it thing. I'm just saying the fact that it frustrated him is, it, it's kind of amusing sounds, to me actually. I've, I've got because a, I've got a, <laughs> I'm just saying. I just the kind of the comptroller right now is looking into the uh, the vice mayor and yes. um, the head I mean, of like head of parks like, and rec like for like stealing you, golf carts. Like you mentioned earlier, yeah, stealing. yeah, with the with, with the golf carts. Yeah, that came down to yeah, that came down to the comptroller. 
Right, and he is now looking into more stuff because if this shit's going on, yeah, it's essentially right. it's a position that looks into right. spending for the entire county. I am focused on the school board, and Ron McPherson is, for all intents and purposes, the right. comptroller the school comes out to the, the school board comes out of the county or the state. So yes, and the comptroller. But I don't want to talk to the guy who's going to tell me about Parks and Rec's fucking golf carts. I want to talk to the guy who's writing the checks to buy new schools to buy fucking books. To say, I'm pretty sure the comptroller is over all of that. I'm not disagreeing spending. with that. Why? You, well, I don't understand why you're arguing this. Well, you're saying you want to talk to the guy that's over this for and the that. fucking school board, and, I'm and that's saying, the guy I have coming. And so I'm saying why, that's the guy that's above him. I, I don't want the guy above him. Can I add a little wrinkle into this? Okay. Uh, this is uh, according to the. Uh, don't give me Wikipedia shit. I, I don't ever give that stuff. This is this is according to the Tennessee Comptroller of the Treasury. This is a Tennessee.gov website. Just want to just want to throw yeah. this out here. This is uh, this is if this doesn't give laughs, I'm Thank done. You. Thank you. Former. This is a uh, Tuesday, March the seventeenth, twenty twenty. This is on the Tennessee.gov. Again, if I don't at least get a smirk out of this, I'm out. Wait, what was the date? I'm already smiling. Tuesday, March the seventeenth, twenty twenty. Okay. Former Knox County Schools Comptroller CTE Director indicted for theft. Okay. Boom. All I didn't right. get a smile on Okay. He so stole $220 million. Apparently there is a... <laughs> See, that's funny. <laughs> apparently there is a Comptroller for the Knox County City Schools. So okay. I've got I've got a serious question so for Seth. There's a Comptroller above the Comptroller for the state. Great. Yes. So Great. S- if Ron doesn't answer the questions that I want to answer, then I will move up the hill. So serious question for Seth. It's a two-part question. First part, why do you have seven tennis balls in your driver, in your dryer? And um, second part, if you don't shave your beard, does it go to your eyeballs? Uh, to answer in reverse question, not quite. <laughs> um, and they are good. They they help keep the wrinkles out. What? They help to keep your clothes from wrinkling, and you drive um, faster. Yeah, I love those, I love those. just to or the second faster. one. I don't remember. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Yeah. And this thing you're trying, I was like, fucking, it's got like seven tennis balls in there. Because when the fucking dog's a pain in the ass, I throw a tennis ball in there, he jumps in after it, I close it, (laughs) and I run it for fucking 15 minutes. Like, you chill the fuck out, bro. That's good. I don't put my dog in the dryer, chill out. So it helps with drying clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, tell me the, the, um, (laughs) the science, the science behind that. I saw it on Facebook. Shut up. No, I don't know. That, that, I mean, they sell that the, shit. I mean, they sell dryer balls that you throw. I bought. I there's bought some of those myself. in there too. Yeah, you bought them and they they like just tumble around with the yeah wet laundry. Yeah, so help, I've they, never seen I mean, that they, before. They, they are you looking up just like are you looking up the dryer ball? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking. I'm looking up the, the, the golf cart. Around. This golf cart thing is actually a real thing. It I mean, is a real thing. I mean, when you put sheets in there, I mean, I've had many a times. I've, I've got a king size bed, but I mean, I put my my sheets in there and they go to dry. And it's just the outside the that's shit dry. They, they pretty much just you know go around in yeah. a circle and doesn't really dry anything. And I got to get in there and I got to moosh it around my fucking self. She said moosh, <laughs> <laughs> like dogs in Alaska. <laughs> moosh, <laughs> moosh. Yeah, I all went together. I said you got to move shit oh, around. Oh, move shit around. I just said shit. moosh. Like you got to move, moosh. You got to move shit around. Sorry. And, so, and so to the make balls the rest help of it. with yeah, the the balls help it move around in. The huh. tumble cycle of the dryer. I might yeah. go to Walmart and get some because dryers balls only go in a. I mean, you can get they make cycle. They make wool like these wool balls that are like sp- like supposed to help yeah. even more. But tennis yeah. balls are my, too. my parents have those. Yeah. yeah, I think the wool balls help with the the static. So, AC, as well. do you have tennis balls in your dryer? No. Soon enough, Mm-mm. when you start washing all, washing all those. Uh, Extra clothing. Let me tell you, there's been I've, I've seen more shit in the last two weeks than I've seen in this entire <laughs> year. You should get like reusable diapers. No. You know how much money you could save. Yeah. Don't care. Yeah. I'm not I a lord. Don't I don't either. do that. That's right. <laughs> I'll buy them and I'll throw that fucking. I shit don't away. understand why people use re Fuck reusable that. diapers. If you don't have the thirty dollars for you know ninety six fucking diapers, you don't need a kid. Well, there's Talk a it. lot of things why people shouldn't have kids. And I, agree. I that, think that, that's diapers on are on the low list of <laughs> that. Fuck yes. <laughs> what I heard, like, I thought it literally saved you money if you had rewashable diapers. So here's no, the, sure I would, could be wrong. I don't know. I, I don't give I've a fuck about that. I mean, I care about saving money, but not to that extent. I'm not putting fucking... And that's, that's, what, it, and that's what it comes down to most people. It. It's like, you know, do I really want to wash it or do I want to just open up another pack of Pampers? Yes. 
Like, what do you do when you're like yeah, out that, of town? Exactly. Like, that's what most people. That's what they know. You're like going for like a, a few days. You got to like keep that shit in a fucking nope. Walmart bag. Mm, like, nope. Till you get back to the it house. goes in a Walmart bag, all right. Then I'll throw away to Waggles. <laughs> at Waggles, is that your drop space? <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. It's not staying in the fucking house. Fuck that. You don't so, have a, you don't have a diaper. They, they get paid that, over that minimum turns. wage, so it's good. Nope. Mm-mm. Goes in a trash bag. Goes in a fucking Waggles. I gas up. I throw away diapers every day. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it sounds reasonable. Yeah. Seriously. Why don't you that just was a, chuck that, it over that fence? I, in your I worked there. People I've, throw away all sorts of shit. I've done that too. <laughs> no, I'll tell you. I mean that that is a that is one of the baby shower gifts that we got that we barely used was like the diaper trash can, like the special ones. I think I, I we got one and I used it for a while until then, like one day when we were using it, and I was like. Wouldn't go down, and then I pulled out like this sausage <laughs> twisted link of like thirty diapers, <laughs> of blue. and I was like, "This is fucking awful." Yes. Uh, yeah, a blue s- diaper sausage. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I remember I, those. I'm not a big fan of uh, people who have them are wonderful. I don't care, especially considering the the house that I'm in have them. I'm not a big fan of cats. I just think like shitting in the house is just a fucking nasty thing anyway, and it's only like a fucking neighborhood cousin of. A fucking kid, a litter box where you've got just fucking diapers in a corner someplace that have been fucking soiled to hell and back. And like, why would you want to keep that inside your home in any format? Like, it should just fucking go away. They fucking should make a toilet away. that you can flush that shit. That's an invention. Maybe so. <coughs> Maybe so. So, so who's, the, who's the comptroller? I don't know. Did you find out? I, Not the I, fired I, one. Uh, um. Yeah, so I mean, what he was saying, there's there's an Ox County comp troller. (laughs) Yes, I, 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 I'm assuming there's also a a, a Tennessee state comp troller, and I was aware of both of those prior to this conversation, right? And I, 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 what I, what, what I'm frustrated with is, I mean, I've always known that's a position that actually looks at the finances as far as looking at at them after the fact. It's not, you know, as far as my understanding. You know, finances being put through them. That comptroller is the person that's actually like going it's the through. State, the it's the state auditor. Yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah. From, from my understanding, yeah. So, I, so I, I guess it wrong. wasn't the comptroller. The comptroller's office apparently was looking at, looking into the career technical education program. Apparently, they stole money. Uh, that, okay. They used a purchasing card to buy nine thousand seven hundred fifty-two dollars worth of parts for vehicles that neither. Back in March. Uh, yeah, that Knox County Department's had in their fleet. So really, Listen, I mean, like... The it, comptroller is the oversight. Really, all you're spending. really saying with, should be with, the with your stuff is, <laughs> like, we need to make sure that we have a competent person that's in in this in our government that is making sure that our money is being used adequately. I mean, that'd, that'd be a start, yeah. yeah. I mean, that'd be, that'd be a major start. I mean... This is assuming <clears throat> that doesn't already happen. I know, uh, true. So I, I guess I just... I, I'm... I, I'm again. I will apologize if it's if if you are, um, if your reaction to this is is defensive libertarianism. I will apologize and we'll take back the statement. But I I I don't understand the leaning toward libertarianism if that is sort of at least fifty percent of what you're pushing is like where your tax money goes. It really just seems like you're a rational human being that doesn't want to waste their money. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't. I I, I this okay. is. It doesn't seem uh, to me. It just doesn't seem right. like that's a libertarian and, and, thing. It seems like that should be a normal person thing. Yeah. Fuck! I don't want my dollar to go up somebody's asshole, unless I want it no, to go up somebody's asshole. But, I mean, that, that, if that's the case, that's different. There are people. A guy who works for us. We were talking about um, like healthcare for all kind but of. But you thing. talked him down off. Uh, I'll let you go ahead. I'm I sorry. Did. I'm sorry. And, go ahead. Um, so Austin was saying he was like, I don't, I'm okay with paying like an extra three hundred dollars out of my paycheck if that means all my friends and family get health care and I was like what and he's like I'll pay extra if, if everyone I know gets health care and I said are these these people that spend like two to three hundred dollars a month on weed and he was like well yeah but they don't have health care and I was like so you want to pay for their weed is what you're saying because they could afford health care they're just choosing not to because they're buying weed with it. So you want to promote their weed habit. And then I said, and then plus also, now you're, you're giving health care to everybody, not just your friends. You're giving it to everybody. And like, why do you want to support that? And like, after talking to him for a little bit, he was like, well, that's true. Like, I don't, I don't know if that'll work. And I was like, and everyone's going to go to the hospital. Everyone's going to, if healthcare is free, when you have a 
crank in your wrist that you don't want to get fixed because you've dealt with it for 10 years. Now you're going to go to the hospital to try to get it fixed because it's free. I mean, I think there's a majority of people even sitting here in this room that have issues medically that they don't go to the hospital because they don't want to pay for it. Well, even, even on, I mean, healthcare is the same as the minimum wage conversation to me is that we've only focused on this one part of it and we only have one solution on the table other than current minimum wage has to go up. That's the only way we can fix this cost of living and income situation. Um, Give me an alternative. Healthcare sucks. The only way we're going to fix it is is a single payer system. Well, no. If if healthcare was free, what would that do to our system? I, like, I, I like, don't, do you have I mean, do you it, have any dental? It do you increase have it on the initial amount, just because. I mean, most people with the insurance that we have, with most people or some people actually having insurance tied to their workplace. I hate that. Part. Most people put off going to the. The dentist, going to the doctor. Most people are like, oh, no, I'm fine, especially males. Go off. They, they put off going to the doctor for anything. But if you have Even the option coverage. to actually going to the doctor, you can fucking find out what's wrong with you instead of right and going to the point that you were fucking having to have to go to the hospital. But, and then but, you're but, at but, the worst-case scenario. Instead of catching it before that fact and addressing that issue. Okay. So so I've, I've got a shoulder. Got to, I've got a shoulder that... that that I should probably should have surgery on, but I don't want to pay that five thousand dollars, so I don't go and get it because I can function as a human being the rest of my life with the shoulders in the case. Now you tell me that all healthcare is free? Fuck it! I'm gonna go get my shoulder fixed. I'm gonna go get my wrist fixed. I'm gonna go get my knee fixed. I'm gonna go get all this shit fixed that I will live with for my whole entire life because it's that's, a pain in the butt. That's great because then you are a functioning individual in that society. Right, the, the, I'm the, a functioning individual now. I'm just getting extra shit. I mean, but it doesn't sound like a bad. I mean, it doesn't sound like a bad thing for you to be a healthier person because it's available. And that's to you. A, that's the exact so point. So that's so what is, it, what it is, gets everybody to the point to where you're not at a derelict state. So where you are not a non-functioning person to where you're having to have to go into an ICU unit so or having I all these am, extra bullshit having to be given to you because you're at a such a horrible state. If we can actually keep you healthy, so my, so you what are, you're saying you is are a not, less burden upon the essential state if we had that state run. So well, what, what we're talking about right now is I'm a burden on the state and I'm a non-functioning human being. No, no you, the, you're at the point to where if you got to the point where you could not pay your bills, the hospital will have to write it off or you have to go into bankruptcy because of that those bills. And those bills get wiped away. But I'm away. not doing that now. You, no, you are not doing that now, but that's what many people do. One no, of the most well, common I'm, things I'm, that people going into bankruptcy is due to medical debt. I'm not talking about somebody having a heart attack or someone having a major medical emergency that they are putting off because they, they can't afford. I'm talking about the minor stuff that people right. deal with on a daily basis right. because Sick. they don't want to spend that extra money that doesn't need it. But what is that going to cause the healthcare industry when those people can go and do it for free? That 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 is the that is what we're talking about. It's not about I'm not talking about somebody that has diabetes. No, and I'm not talking about medication. that either. It's, we're talking about money is what we're talking about, and that's the that's the that's the key in the conversation. Is is free is a, free is not a real word either, where it's paid for. Okay, so you, so you had insurance through an employer. I, I worked for a major corporation. For myself, my wife, and my two kids, I paid over seven grand in insurance just in premiums, just to fucking have insurance yes but if you with, if, with copays or i think our we had to pay uh, okay i think five grand all right so we good. had to pay out of pocket before we okay even good paid the any. insurance through your job is is prohibitively expensive to even use is what you're saying like you had it but you couldn't really even fucking use it because it was too expensive for the parts you had to pay for and you paid a ton well, basically I mean, you paid a ton of money for nothing because you you it took it out of your check but you couldn't do anything really with it because you couldn't afford the other parts I think of it. It's, it's all, I mean, what insurance is. It's preventative in case of something terribly happening. Right. To where but something okay, costs right. tens of thousands right. of dollars. Right, and so so I guess one part of it is is, is 
since this is the solution we're talking about, we're assuming the cost to do the thing is not going to change. So whatever whatever the actual procedure is isn't going to change on the other side of this. It's just who's paying for it is the conversation. I, I personally am a big fan of taking insurance out of work. We talked about that last week. I don't like that most people's who have private insurance have it through their employer because then that gives them a disincentive to go out and find a new job or something like that because they don't want to lose their insurance. It's where right. I'm at right now. The only reason, the main reason I'm still working where I'm working is because no, of insurance. Like Cobra not because has of, been a, a common place upon anybody that like right, and then it puts a burden on the right that Cobra insurance. Which again, so we Cobra's talked about insurance is crazy expensive. Right, right. which exactly. we also talked about, and that, that's only to tide you over until you find another fucking job. Like that only lasts for so, so long. So, but, but what, what what you're talking about and what I'm talking about are two completely different things. I'm talking about the the things that you live with in your life and function and live your whole entire life with um and you don't go to the doctor just because yeah is it a pain it it is a pain you know to have a a shoulder that hurts sometimes when it when or doing things with sometimes but i'm not gonna go fucking pay ten thousand dollars to have my shoulder fixed it's a shitty argument to say that that i'm gonna live with pain because i don't want to pay for it because it's too expensive. That's a shitty argument. I, I mean, I, I, I understand no, what you're getting at. it's not a shitty argument. I understand what you're getting at because the people that are willing to put up with it, like yourself, are not going to burden a single-payer system well, I have, with those costs. Well, I'm a bad example because I have it free. I can right. I can go get it fixed for free, but I just don't want to go through the... the, the... Well, that's, that's socialized medicine. What? Right, and he doesn't use that either, but I that's not the point. It, yeah. So even, even on the non-military it's version shitty. of your point, to say that, to, to say that well... <laughs> Well, since it's so prohibitively expensive, I don't get this minor thing fixed. And if it was free, air quotes free, then everybody would go get all these minor shit fixed all the time, and it would it would it would run up a huge amount of cost to whoever the single payer is, and it would make it pre- prohibitively expensive. That's that's what a lot of people do already. Like even like with insurance, I've done it myself. Right. Even with like dental insurance, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna hold off a little while. I, even with dental insurance, I'm gonna hold off going in and getting a cavity. Listen, uh, th- th- f- a couple things. There's no such thing as free. Uh, I echoed this from Seth just a minute ago. Somehow it's being paid for. That's the first thing. Right. Second thing, I I, I think so. In this in this in this scenario, I, I if it's so bad that you need to go, then you need to go. It doesn't matter how much it costs. I agree, and uh, I all that's number two and number three. We are the richest country in the history of mankind. I'm not going to go so far as to saying that, that all healthcare should be available, and uh, maybe a different phrase to say it is: uh, you don't have to pay as much, or it's paid for in your tax dollars, or whatever. I, however, we want to phrase it. I don't. I don't agree with it should be a free. That's not a good way to phrase it. Um, but the fact that that it is so and and I work in it so like the fact that it is so expensive for people is fucking absurd. I agree. So I think there is where we start and we've got to figure out a way to make it less expensive for people. I don't give a fuck how we do it. We have to do it in such a way that we are actually intentional about how we're doing it and that people actually go to the to the doctor's office to have things fixed for them that they don't have to deal with every day when they wake up. I don't give a fuck how we do it. But to say that the system we have currently is working is not accurate, and to say that it should be completely, unequivocally available 100% at the snap of a finger is also not the way to do it either. We've got to figure out a way to fix that. There's no way that this is sustainable for where we are going forward. I will say one more thing. Sorry. One more thing. We had we had folks in the very beginning of this COVID stuff that did not go to the hospital because they were concerned about getting COVID. And when some of the restrictions were being lifted and people started going back to the to the doctor's office more often, we, we saw more emergent cases, more patients that were sicker than typically they are as a result of not going to the doctor's office. So avoiding the physician or avoiding your primary care, avoiding hospitals at large is not the answer either. So... I don't think what what you're saying about that has anything that you're talking about a COVID situation. We're not talking about no, no, no because no, no, that's it's, it's a compound. It's that's, it's just compounding issues. Right, talking about people, that's all I'm saying. Like I was saying, right. like most people, saying. like when they have an issue, they will put it off. Like it's generally most males, right? And by like, putting no, it, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, just got a little bit of chest pain. They don't go to the primary care physician, right? And so by putting it off and, when it would have been a, a five hundred dollar visit, that's what it's I'm saying. now a ten thousand dollar visit for a major whatever because yeah. it 
I mean, but that, that's there that, in, we're talking about people that have insurance. Most people that have insurance. Yeah, even with insurance. I mean, yes. I mean that's just general nature. Like most people are like, no, I'm fine. I mean, they don't want to assume that they have the worst. I mean, most we people are, assume, we are not having the same conversation. We are talking about two completely different. Here, things. We are talking about the same fucking uh, thing. Hold on a second. <laughs> no, hold, we're not. Uh, hold on. This is what we're actually talking about. The the argument for this has been framed in a way for us to accept healthcare to be free or not to be free when that's not the argument. The, 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 the conversation is, is healthcare too expensive? And everybody can agree that it is. And so we have to start there and then move forward. This idea that we're pitting ourselves against each other, red versus blue and Trump versus Biden or this two party bullshit. Th- this is, this is just another example of fucking bullshit rhetoric where insurance companies and people in power don't want us to agree to change the system. At the end of the day, we can all agree that healthcare is too expensive. Now, how the fuck do we fix it? Fuck the whole, is it free? Is it taxpayer money? Blah, blah, blah. How do we truly find common ground and get it fixed? That's how we go forward with this. Otherwise, we're just arguing about whether or not we should have healthcare. That's absurd. Because yeah, what, what number, what you're saying, like, so like um, a 10-hour open heart surgery should not cost $200,000. Um, is that a question? No, it's a statement. Okay. Like what like in in 10 hours that hospital room cleaning it the the surgeons there all that kind of stuff that does not cost $200,000. Right. And and I think I I tend to agree with you, uh, but at the same time you also have the American Medical Association and the American Nurses Association and uh all these other fucking people including insurance companies that are saying, "Well, wait a minute." It might be that much money. And so I, I feel like that we... It, but, but I'm not talking about the situation. I'm talking about the people in that room. Mm-hmm. That room, that hospital room, in the hospital, not used, used, does not change. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. What I'm telling you, though, is is that those folks or, or those organizations that I just mentioned to you... They are adamantly opposed to what you just said. And so if they can paint the argument differently that way that we are arguing against one another, even though we are probably saying very similar things, it distracts us and nothing changes. All right. So the question, yeah. so the, the real That's question, what I'm saying. Right. The real question is um, we need to have health care reform, not should right. health care be free. Really, that's actually what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. This idea that we should, uh, we uh, and, and this is going to be a hot button topic for you, so just give me a second, let me finish all of it. This idea that we should repeal Obamacare is nonsense. Like, what we should be talking about, not repealing Obamacare, we should have a, have a conversation about what do we do to fix Obamacare or fix our health care system. If we have people that simply say, let's get rid of Obamacare, then essentially this idea that, that you have pre-existing conditions, uh, you can't actually get health care unless you're working for an employer now and so it's just a fucking goddamn distraction like we can all agree that health care health care needs to be fixed but like these are hot button topics where we just say repeal obamacare well, let's get rid of it all right let's get rid of it like see that's, that's what that's what you're hearing that's what so you're you're on that same thing and and when when you know well, trump talks about appealing a uh, repealing, repealing. Mm-hmm. Obamacare, he's talking about getting rid of Obamacare and bringing in something else. I think that's bullshit because he uh, had right. he had two fucking years that he could have done that. Two years he had both he had control of both houses. I mean, he, he did, could he have did, done that. He did quote say it in the debate, but I, I, so has, I have to has, agree with has, with has he on repealed that one. Obama, Obamacare? No, he has not. Why is that? Because clearly he doesn't want to. He took out the mandate. Right, he took out the mandate, but like he had, be, his, be, may, maybe it's because he knows he can't just get rid of it. Maybe he's not as big of a fucking idiot as everybody wants to believe, well, and he knows he can't get rid of it without having something else. No, so is he working on something else? He's, he's tried to he's tried to survive for four fucking years, saying he's going to come up with something. Listen, else. Listen, I'm not. This is not bigger uh, and better. Hold on, let me take a step back. I'm not bashing on Trump here. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if he had something to replace it with, he had two full years. He could have replaced it with whatever he wanted to replace it with because it would have passed. Well, maybe he didn't have something good enough to replace it with in two years. Oh, come on, man. Like. You can come up with a healthcare system in two years. Oh, come on, man. And I'm saying, I mean, come no, on, really, man. Like, four years. Like, like uh, I don't, w- you whatever. at least put something so, out to so, say so that... So prior to Obama, how many people we've had in president and 
no one else could come up with Obamacare. Okay, so let's let's time uh, out. But that's not the point, though. That's he ran off of that. Like I, I'm not again. This is not. Well, a that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's not a it's not an instantaneous he solution. Had, I, but it could have been is what I'm saying. He had he could have passed anything that he wanted to. He had complete Republican control. He or, truly could have created anything. Or at least that he proposed wanted. something to say like, hey, like yes. I, I proposed this, but everybody else was against it. I tried something. Now he couldn't do it at year three because because the Democrats had the House and they weren't going to vote anything that Trump. Would so have. I don't know. Where we're getting. But again, we're 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 we are now again on a on a rhetoric fight over. Over what? Okay, so we've established we, we've established one thing. If nothing else, it's too goddamn expensive, right? We agree that healthcare is too expensive. Yes, okay. yes, can, we can need I, to I, pay nurses I, and doctors less. Can I not? We agree with that. Uh, we that's all, not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not saying it's more or less. That's not. That's not. Again, that, that's right. I will say that I'm, we're not down the rhetoric train. The, the point of the hold statement. On, hold on. Hold on. The point, on. Of this, the point of the statement was, if it's if, if if you can't figure it out in two years, then like. That was the point. It's not a rhetoric point. It's, well, like, well, it's well, actually the, true that he had the right, ability to do that. But well, I, I joked about that. But like, if you are the nurse assisting on that open heart surgery that that is costing me the payer or through my insurance two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, you know, maybe you're making three hundred dollars over those ten hours. Maybe the doctor's making a. I'm making more than that. Whatever over t- over ten hours, a thousand, a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars for ten hours. Go and brush your shoulders. As a physician off, or as a nurse? no, as a nurse, nurse in the OR. Me? What are you getting paid? Non COVID. Non COVID. Uh, ten. Uh, take home. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why you're making this. Let's say I'm, I'm oh, trying to make it complicated. I'll even say much. two thousand dollars for ten hours of work. Let's say I'm let's not say that. that much, but okay. you're not making that. Let's say you make two thousand dollars, okay. and then we pay the three doctors five thousand dollars for that ten hours of work. That's okay. fifteen thousand. That's say there's three nurses. That's another. There's more than three. Let's no. say five nurses. No, there's so not. the scrub ten thousand. So we got we got ten thousand, and then we have the doctors at five thousand. Anesthesiologists. There's three of them. Mm-hmm. So an anesthesia of four. So twenty. And a CRNA. Thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars in people doing work. Okay. Why are we billing it two hundred thousand dollars? So then the question would be, are there kick, which we've had this conversation here on the show, are there kickbacks that are being given to the insurance companies as a result of this bundled care that they get for the patients going there in the first place? That's it. Which is a completely different, well, not different. It's, it's a separate but different argument that needs to be addressed, which, again, this is preempts the whole, this whole thing is fucking complicated mm-hmm. because there's a lot of hands in the cookie jar. And it's really easy to say, well, the hospital is the one to blame for charging this amount of money. Well, that's true, but you also have the American Medical Association that's pushing for certain things. You have JCO that's involved saying that certain things are supposed to be done in a certain way. You have insurance companies that are getting kickbacks for, well, if Blue Cross Blue Shield is in here doing this, then maybe it's X amount of money. And if it's a different insurance company, it's bullshit. I I don't disagree with that, but but these are all things that, that, you know, like. How much is a COVID test at Kroger? I I have no idea. Or how much did COVID test? Anyone know? Anyone? Not, Anyone? Yours was a grand. I know you told Mine us Mine was $1,000. Right. Because it was in the beginning. And they were like, oh, let's charge them $1,000. Sure. Bullshit. I don't disagree. Insulin has been yeah, around. I thought a lot were covering COVID tests. Huh? I think I this was lot, like April. I thought a lot of companies like started covering COVID tests. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't pay it. I've not heard anything in a couple months. But I told the VA to fuck off. Mm. So again... I was with you until you said this is rhetoric. The the you're you're fighting over the rhetoric that the president has put out. I'm not fighting over any rhetoric. I'm uh, what I'm saying is his uh, Max's statement. No, really, I mean Max's statement was then uh, Max's statement was he was going to create something, I, and I'm saying that unequivocally he was never going to. He just wants to remove it, or his his rhetoric. Uh, the Trump's rhetoric was he wants to remove it. Maybe the real rhetoric. Uh, maybe the reality is he never wanted to to remove it, and it was just a Republican. I was going to say because I could say the same thing. He had two years to remove it if he wanted to remove it. Right. R- right. Yeah. So. So he going knows way back not to remove it <clears throat> yeah. unless he has something else in place. There were attempts made. Yeah, he ran on removing. And, and if it was if McCain would have been dead, actually, if McCain had died, this is actually a pretty cool little video. Go back and look at McCain putting his thumbs down. One of the last things he did, he was voting against repealing uh, the ACA. And we're like, you know. Because as far as that's gone to the Supreme Court, is, you know, there's been a lot of talk of pre-existing conditions. 
if they essentially null and void Obamacare, that takes away the whole right. pre-existing condition. Right. Which I dis- I, agree, I I agree that they should pre-existing right. conditions is stupid. Like, That's been like the weird like part of it. It's like we want to be we want to take out Obamacare. You, you shouldn't. You it's shouldn't. Like, okay, be if, like, you, if you have insurance. All right, so I got one. Cover it. I've, right. got, I've got. That's I think I got an idea. If you invalidate solution. Obamacare, that start. takes that takes away the entirety of Obamacare. Right. The I never quote, unquote, Obamacare. I never I said it. that we should get rid of Obamacare and not have something else. Never. And I think that's been like the the weird point is everyone's like, hey, we want to get rid of like parts of it. We want to get rid of all of it. And it's like, well, if you take it to the Supreme Court and null and void all of it, you can't just pick and choose what you want to keep. And going back to the stupid neighbors comment, there there were several folks that I've had conversations with, me personally that I've had conversations with in a healthcare system where I have said, do you agree? We just had the conversation. Do you like Obamacare? The answer was no. Like okay, that's great. What do you it's, think? It's, what, it's hold, hold because on. you call it Obamacare, not right. uh, exactly. If I say, care. what do you think about the Affordable Care Act? I love that shit. Well, yeah. it's like, well, goddamn, how fucking, how informative right. are you? It all just got called Obamacare, right? Right. Anyway, what were you gonna say? Right. You have a solution to this? Although I think it was sarcasm. No, I, I mean I had a thought. <laughs> is is uh, is you, you, like was, you? No, you take uh, 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 this is not libertarian. Sorry. Um, no, don't apologize. I'm happy. You about you. You make it so that you cannot have a preferred – take out the preferred provider system. So it's like if if this is the – if if this is the procedure, it doesn't matter where they go to get it. The insurance company has to pay for it. Okay, so, so let me provide you an alternative response to that. If you're saying that, then you as a limited government person are then saying a government is intervening and telling a company – that they cannot have their business conducted in a way in which that they've had it for millennia. Yeah. Did I not disclaimer I, I, I from the front I, I, I that I know this I, isn't libertarian? I, I get it. I understand that. I'm just, I'm just, I just want to, you know, like well, we're okay with that. Well, I, I know, I, I know some people that were um, hurt by Obamacare where they had like, they were healthy and they just had, um, insurance for catastrophic kind mm-hmm. of stuff and then when the Obamacare took took effect they were told that their policy that they had did not comply with the government sure. standards so sure. now they had to pay more for sure because the government said we don't think you have enough insurance sure I, it, it, it needs- and th- there was a few people and that's 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 few and far between but right I, and and i and i'm the first person to say that that it is by far not a perfect system that's set up which is why this needs to be a national dialogue that we talk about all the time the problem is though there are a lot of hands in the cookie jar and there are mm-hmm. there's a lot of money from a lot of insurance companies that don't want this stuff so, to so. work out well for the consumer i've they always thought that like the whole like mandate um i'm pretty damn fucking sure it came from the insurance lobbyists sure, who said, like, sure. oh, if 100%. you want this thing to pass, like, 100%. we want you to yeah. put in there a mandate that, like, everybody you're else gonna that doesn't start getting, have it, you're going to you're gonna make them, like, pot, pay insurance. You're, you're like, going to make them I buy it, or else you're going to fine them. I can't afford insurance, and now you're going to fine me because I can't afford insurance. Sure. Yeah, so, like, you, sure. you're not going to hurt us on this. And they're like, well, no, we want to create a public, 100%. Uh, a government public option. Like, no, no, we want you to put in there. They're like, hey, if somebody doesn't have insurance, they're going to have to pay you guys. It's, it, it, it also, it shouldn't be lost on us that the folks that are against it being under the purview exclusively of the government, like everybody has Medicare, for instance, or everybody has yeah. like the VA, regardless of whether it's good or not, we can focus on why it's not good. But like, it, it should not be lost in us that the people that are typically pushing against that are, why would Blue Cross Blue Shield want this to be a government funded thing? They are gone, if that's the case. Cigna is gone. Yeah. Like they don't make exactly. money. Like that's always a, that, that's you have a board be like of directors that don't have money. It's now. Like, I mean, I understand it. It would be a crazy fucking thing to try to up in our entire insurance industry. Right, and I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to imply it would be easy or that, but but like they have this this idea that like wow it, it should be free. Well, that doesn't make any sense because somebody's got to pay for it. And then it's like well it should be it should be socialized. Look how bad the VA is. Like well then we need to fix it. Like see like see it needs, this is, it needs to be fixed. Yeah. I'll tell you exactly how Obamacare came about. <laughs> so they were like everybody should have insurance, and then they were like oh we want to exclude 
pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. And then the insurance company's like, fuck that. We're not doing that. They're like, no, we're going to require everybody to have insurance. And if they don't have insurance, we're going to find them. Yeah, that's what Sam was just saying. And then then the the insurance company's like, okay, we'll give you pre-existing conditions. For sure. But you have to require everybody to have it. And like, so it forced people to get insurance they didn't want. And they created a, a government portal or whatever that was... The basic insurance companies they're lobbying for this stuff, yeah, right? So, Thank you lobbyists, yeah, exactly. So it was not it was not a good thing for the consumer in the in the long run. Yeah, I mean, everybody assumes like in the, the, the no run, of the but... Affordable Care Act slash Obamacare was like the first draft. It's like no, that's what came to a general consensus to what they thought they might be able to pass. And really, the only reason why he was able to get that through is because it was a Democrat controlled. Uh, both chambers of Democrat controlled at that time. At the time, so similar again. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse yeah. here, but yeah, I don't so know how Trump much. did I don't not want to by. pass some shitty other law because he had both houses. I'm saying that that the focus was exclusively repeal, and there was not an alternative at all given yeah. for what would be replaced. But you it. already said that he could have repealed it he if could've. he wanted to. But For he sure, didn't. Well, not because he. He, he doesn't have the control. I mean, really, McCain was like, if you. It's like, again, anybody that's listening, still, I'm. I'm sorry that you still are listening to this shit, but if you if you look at uh, McCain's, just like Google uh, McCain a full Affordable Care Act vote, like he walks into the chamber and puts his thumb down, like there was there was a reaction in a otherwise quiet chamber that was like McCain was the one that saved Obamacare from happening, and like there was a big, of course, you know, Trump is bashing him because at the time they, the thought was we're, we're fucking repealing this shit and if and they they had both chambers and I, I really think if if there would have been something that would have replaced it i think mccain would have potentially said okay let's get rid of it but like you can't just sort of pull the rug out and say fuck it you're not going to have any insurance i, now. I agree no i, I you know? agree there's, there's, everybody was there's like, gonna repeal be something. It, but, yeah but there was no solution to replace it with and everybody's like okay there's yeah, never been we I, understand like that's it, this isn't the greatest thing but there's but the if problem, you don't have anything to go to, then then everybody's gonna be like, "Well, what's your solution?" Like, no, we don't want to change yet unless you actually have. And it's a politicized. Plan. But, there, there's not there's not yeah. any sort of yeah, like nothing is politics. there's no good in in both sides getting on board and and agreeing and compromising because you can continue to just say, "Hey, come with us. We're the Democrats. We're the ones that want insurance." Versus, "Hey, come with us. We're the Republicans. We want you to have better insurance. We want to repeal this crap." And it's just it's a bunch of fucking well, the, the, Mickey Mouse bullshit the, is all the, it is. The problem is 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 there is a lot of rhetoric of Democrats that people think that vote Democrat you're gonna get free health care. Right. And nothing's free. No. I mean I'm I'm echoing Seth. No, here. but it's they, they believe that, like well, and they're dumb. If that's, I mean, if they truly believe that, that is no, the people that are voting. I mean, well, you got, you got maybe Medicaid, not all of them, but Medicare, they're dumb. But I mean, outside of that, yeah, there's no free health care. Even still, that's not free. I think it's that's what free. Seth was right. was alluding to. It's is still it's still taxpayer, it's still taxpayer right. money. No, it's it's still not free. My mom's on Medicare, Medicaid, one of those two, because um, she's retired. But she has uh, right, annual. You get that supplemental. She has an annual out of pocket expense based off her income. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so she still has to pay out. Mm-hmm. And even if she didn't have to pay out, it's still not free. Somebody's paying for it somewhere. Yeah. Sure. Well, when when we say free, we mean people that don't have any fucking money that are not going to pay shit in or, anything. Or people that do have money, but since it's there. No, health care is... You checked ex- out there for a second. I'm fucking bored. We're arguing this. We've been arguing the same thing for 20 fucking minutes. Okay. Do you want to change the subject? No, right. you're no, good. He, you he, guys go ahead. Okay. He what he wants to talk about is the signs in his front yard. I was trying to. No, I tried to put a fucking solution up because that was your first question when we got on the topic. And solution? as soon as I did, it was that's not very libertarian of you, and we're back on arguing about Trump not having a, a replacement. You, well, I expected you to respond a little bit to that. No, your, I started off by saying I know this isn't libertarian, but here's an idea. What was your right, idea? And, and okay, all I was trying to say was like at this point, why is this okay for you as a libertarian to say this? Is what I was I was like giving you the baton for you to respond <laughs> that because it's not okay as a libertarian because <laughs> I said it from the front part. Oh, you're trying to say? Oh, okay, that's that's kind of funny, Sam. So let's talk about the Manus race. We'll get we'll, we'll, get, man, we'll not, get we'll get Seth back involved. I, I mean, I, I was trying to get him involved by saying that. Like, no, because you want to argue about libertarianism instead of talk about a a, a a solution I throw on the table. 
And it's like, I'm not trying to argue so, about so, the libertarian. So we didn't talk about your topic? Like, you just go, boop, boop. Oh, poor Sam. <laughs> you're you're going to make fun of me with how much time you spend on your phone not paying attention? I don't, like I said, I don't care. If you guys want to go on, I just have nothing to add to this part of the conversation. So I don't, I don't get on my phone. Now you know how I feel. Do what? Now you know how I feel. Okay, I mean, it's fine. I, look, all I was trying to say is it's, it seems like it's a slippery slope. If we're, if we're allowing uh, government, interv- like you, you had said at the very beginning of this of this podcast, we want limited government, but at the same time, we're okay with having government involvement in how the business is run. I'm just trying to find, like, forget about libertarianism. I'm just trying to find, like, at what point do we decide? Do we? Do, are you just simply saying that I'm trying to find some common ground in order for the country to work better? Is that if that's the case, that's all you had to say, and we move on. Like, okay. I'm not. I mean, like, I'm not trying to have a female conversation. Well, because uh, I because I, I I knew but I know better than to go. Well, let's go full libertarian on it and go full private, and then there's no insurance. Co- well, there could be insurance companies, but I can go to the doctor, give him a fifty dollar bill, and he does whatever I need him to do. We can debate that topic. Like, you, I'm not trying like, to debate would, that topic. I'm like trying that. to throw. Why a, not? Why not? Because I'm mean, trying to throw a realist solution on the table. Because I understand. Why is that, that not realist? Because I understand. Are you saying the the libertarian argument is not realist? It's awfully reactive today. I'm not really sure. I wasn't trying to. I didn't. I, this is the most it's, famous it's, talk I know. ever. It's also the most reactive he's ever been. It's the it's. The 25 of, days of sobriety gets to you after a while. I gotta stop taking oh, a nap before I come doing. in here. Start. Did you take a nap today? No. Oh, uh, oh, so you typically you do? Yeah. Oh, well, damn, no naps for Sam. I've got a cigar i got to smoke, and I've got, you know, I, I'm sure I've got duties i got to do. We can... We can wrap this up if you want to. I mean, it's fine. I mean, it, you. It, <laughs> so this turns into this turns into me being me being defensive about not being libertarian for once, from the guy who nine times out of ten it's like, well, let's talk about solutions, and so I try to, and it talks and it's an argument about libertarianism instead of about I, a solution. I, in place. I, I'm I'm happy to have that as a solution. I'm just trying, like, truly, all I'm trying to say is, at what point. Like, really, all I was looking for is, hey, at this particular circumstance, all I'm looking for is common ground, and I'm trying to negotiate and get a, a better perspective. And if that means that I'm not 100% libertarian, then so be it. That's all the answer I was looking for. I thought we were brainstorming. I, I thought we were, too. I wasn't, I, like, I truly wasn't trying to push a button and get you pissed off. Like, I was no, really I'm just not, trying I, to say, I, like, if it was me, that's all I would have said. I'd been like, all right, fuck it, you know? Like, I am I am uh, left of center-ish on a lot of things but i'm right at center on some things and like if it's not completely consistent then motherfuck off that's just how it is. i mean like i don't give a fuck like i want i'm pro guns uh i'm pro you can have sex with whomever you want to have sex with and even I, a dolphin yeah even a dolphin so early, long as like, a dolphin oh, gives like, consent like somehow. the right size anti-gun and i'm like what the fuck are you talking about the left side so like at the end of the day i don't think we fit in these in these boxes i just think you know it, it actually is beneficial for us to uh, you know, uh, give up things that we would otherwise stand for. The, the, at the end so. of the day, we are we have a peg and we're trying to fit it in the right hole. Mm-hmm. And the problem is we have these political figures that have made the holes for our pegs, and we're trying to. I have said this before. Fit it in. There are times <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> there, 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 there are times this motherfucker. Fucking he gym. says he says stuff, yeah. and Read I'm just like mind. he's drunk or he's not listening or both. And then there are other times he says these things, and I'm just like, God damn it, that's good. Yeah. And what's funny is we'll talk about it next week, and he won't remember these. Yeah, I'll like, remember. Did I, I say that? <laughs> what are you really? talking about? Did I say that? What do you mean? I, I said, of course I said that. I said, that really said that? <laughs> no, but it's true. It's like you're, you're trying to figure out where you fit in, and yeah. you just you just go with whatever you, what's the closest yeah, I think, but I think, no, no peg actually fits. Yeah, I think that's what everybody wants. I mean, they they don't want everybody to be the be outlier. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what everybody wants. That's where we're at. I mean, everybody, everybody wants to like you know at least you know fit in with some kind of subgroup. They don't want to feel like an outlier, which is horse shit. Which is horse shit. But I mean, people want to feel like they belong to something, and I, I, I think that's. A part of one I mean, I'm thing that, sure it's, uh, that brings people to you know certain ideologically. What's their what's the thing you were talking about pre air? Uh, they identify themselves at least like somewhat with with you know certain groups, and they just kind of like dig themselves more into that particular group. Is they want to be able to identify? They want to be yeah. the outlier. They want to feel a part of some group. Like nobody wants to be because evolution, an individual. Like evolutionary, if you weren't in the group, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of that, definitely. Yeah, I'm f- very aware of that. Oh, are, are you? Yeah. I really wanted to bring that up tonight, but uh, we're we never out, got we're to out it. Of, yeah, we're out of time. We'll save that for two weeks from now. You're out of time. 
Yeah, that's true. You're I mean, at war. Keep doing whatever the hell you guys want to do. <laughs> I mean, we're at 150. I like to get to two, but... It's better than that first thing we had. We just ruined it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's like, he's oh, gonna be pissed again. Shit, I gotta end the show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fuck. What do you want me to do? I mean, I can't talk to myself for ten minutes if I need to. <laughs> um, episode thirty-one point three, which is actually episode thirty-three, is in the books. Um, almost in agreement at gmail dot com, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, like I said, I got Manus and. Massey in this week. I'm trying to get the group that's uh, boat, the boat no group in at some point this week. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Apparently, I'm not a perfect libertarian. Screw you guys. You muted me. Yeah, I did. Be good to one another, please. There you go. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Appreciate you. Um, I tried to call the Democrat how to get a ride to the polls thing. And it was the weirdest conversation. I meant to talk about that, but we got too busy talking about other stuff. Ugh, it was weird. But anyway, have a great night, everybody. Appreciate you listening. Um, almost in agreement. Almost in agreement at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, most major podcast providers. If we're not on one you like, shoot us an email, and I'll see if I can figure out how to get on there. It's your world. Live in it. Do, 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 do.